Earlier this week, Hurricane Matthew made its way onto Florida's east coast, bringing 100 mile per hour sustained winds into Daytona Beach. Some of the damage left behind was quite severe, but the area is recovering, and Bethune-Cookman football is back on the schedule today. At Municipal Stadium, Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference action, as the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats, winless so far this season and in the conference, take on the powerful North Carolina A&T Aggies, 2-0 in the conference, 4-1 on the season. And up here in the booth, joined by former NFL quarterback Jay Walker, I'm Eric Clemens, thanking you for spending part of your college football Saturday with us here on the ESPN Family of Networks. Well, Jay, it's been three straight weeks counting today now, and in each of the first two weeks we've seen North Carolina a and we have found out for sure that Tariq Cohen is definitely one of the top players in FCS football. Yeah, the ultimate weapon for the number one team in all of HBCU football. Tariq Cohen showing why he's the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference all-time lead rusher but also why he's one of the best running backs in all of FCS football. A Peyton Award watch list, finalist, he's got a good chance of winning that. And the reason why, you see it here, he's got fantastic moves. Consecutive weeks, he's rushed for over 200 yards. The bigger the spotlight, the bigger the performance for Tariq Cohen, one of the best football players in America. Now, from Bethune Cookman, you could say an understatement that this is a must-win situation for Coach Terry Sims. They've been dogged by weather delays and cancellations this year, a bunch of injuries, and they got a lot of young players, and they'll be led by the redshirt freshman Akibius Williams today. The head coach, Terry Sims, is going to Akibius Fields because it's almost time for the next generation to step up. Disappointing season so far for the Wildcats, but a game like this with an opportunity to pull off an upset, they're going to need the young quarterback to throw the ball effectively to get some of those yards in the secondary of North Carolina a &T. And, of course, Rod Broadway and his Aggies will have something to say about that. He is known for stingy defenses wherever he goes, and the Aggies one of the stingier defenses in the MEAC and all of FCS again this season. Terry Sims, his counterpart across the field in his second season here at Bethune-Cookman. Bethune-Cookman will be kicking to a and to start this one. And you talk about an ironic season. Head coach Terry Sims says, we, we can't get a regular football game. They've had a game that was canceled because of lightning. They've had a game that with the hurricane was postponed, and they had a game that was uh, postponed against South Carolina State, which they'll play later in the year. And sure enough, on cue, right before kickoff, heavy rain comes into this Daytona area. And as the heavy rain falls, and you know, we don't care too much about this heavy rain, Jay. Just no lightning, please. <laughs> We've had enough delays, especially if you're here amongst those at Bethune-Cookman. Chris Garden is back deep. He's one of the deep receivers to receive the kickoff of Uriel Hernandez. And I think this is a cloud burst. This will probably be beyond us in the next few minutes or so. At least we hope. Giovanni Francis, by the way, is kicking off, not Hernandez, and it's a short kick coming down to the up man who looked like he fair caught it, and he did right at the 28-yard line, which the rules allow him to do. So Bethune-Cookman will take over. First and 10 at about its own 28-yard line. They'll spot it. I saw them throwing the ball kind of upfield as if they were moving it further up. 29-yard line we'll call it. Lamar Reynard is going to take over. Uh, Reynard, the quarterback, this has to be efficient. Doesn't right. have to be great, be efficient, and stay out of the way of Tariq Cohen. And, of course, every defense has to game plan for number 28. Here's Cohen, bottled up, and doesn't get much at all. He might have lost a yard or so on the play as he was brought down by the middle linebacker, Trenton Bridges, for a loss of one. And that's why I think Tariq Cohen's a special running back. You saw there, there was nothing there for the offensive line. But imagine, that happens a lot, but he still has such phenomenal numbers on the year. And you see the numbers for Lamar Radar, 61% passer, which is good, but they really need him to do better on third downs when you talk to Rob Broadway, the head coach. And remember, he left last week's game, last time we saw him with some kind of injury and did not return. Here's Cohen bouncing it outside. Still on his feet and taken down with a nice open field tackle at about the 33-yard line after a pickup of five yards. And that was a fantastic open field tackle. 
Alexander Morales, number 36, was there to make a nice play in the open field. So it'll be third and six for the Aggies. The so rain has let up a little bit. Reinhardt on the rollout. Throws and has a receiver, and that one just slipped right out of the hands of Xavier Griffin on the far sideline. I don't think you can say anything there except wet ball might have caused a drop. Yep. Looked like it might have slipped through the gloves, but that was a nice job of moving the pocket by A&T. Reinhardt put the ball on the money. Griffin unable to make the catch. And we talked about them needing to convert on third downs to get better. Well, that's an example of they should have had the first down to keep the drive alive instead they're in punt formation. Now, watch the Bethune Cookman punt return team. They ranked sixth nationally in punt returns so far this year with a 20.44 average. That's Frank Brown deep to receive, feels this on his 13. And Brown gets it out about over the 20 to the 21 yard line where Bethune Cookman will take over first and 10. That's a 52 yard punt with a six yard return. And again, they're going to be relying on the redshirt freshman Akevius Williams at quarterback, 6'2", 188 pounds out of Madison, Florida. He's completing 45% of his passes, has three interceptions, no touchdowns yet. And he can keep it on the ground. He has two rushing, rushing touchdowns and 97 yards on the ground so far this season. And for Bethune Cookman, this is the team that has built their reputation on just beating people up at the line of scrimmage running the football effectively. That just hasn't been the case this year. Only averaging 157 yards per game on the ground, down from a season ago when they averaged well over 200 yards rushing. Williams running out of time and runs out of room. He is brought down by Kenneth Melton. Melton getting a sack on the opening play of the game, and that one lost seven. And that's a young mistake there. If you're going to decide to go to the short side of the field, take a look. Once you decide to go right on the short side, that throw has to be there right away. You cannot go from the short side right all the way back to the left side or the field side of play and think you have enough time to get rid of the football. Second and long. Williams a quick strike and getting there about the same time as the ball. The safety coming up from this position for a &T. to knock that one away. It'll be third and long. Zarius Lockhart was the one who came in and arrived just as the ball did. Opponents converted only two of 29 on third down of 10 or longer against A&T so far this season. So talk about the stingy defense. That's exactly what we mean. And this is third and 17. Williams trying to set up the screen far side and he completes it, but not for much. And sniffing it out there was the man along the defensive line, number 99, Marquise Ragland. Marquise Ragland's having a fantastic senior season. He's been a steady component of this defense. Number 99 in white from his nose tackle position, able to stretch that screen pass all the way to the sideline, not allowing the Wildcats to pick up any positive yardage. Uriel Hernandez is that no, I'm sorry, Jonathan Cagle, pardon me, is in on the punt. And we have a whistle a little bit before the snap flag on the play. Call start. Offense, number 13. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Fall start against Bethune Cookman. And that is a look at Chris Garden. He has 10 punt returns of 40 or more yards in his career and he's averaging 11.6 per return on eight returns so far this season he's the man standing at the wildcat 45 yard line to field this one low line drive punt it'll bounce and gets across midfield where it'll roll dead right at the 45 yard line so excellent field position for the aggies of north carolina a t after the 43 yard punt the rainy first quarter continues in a couple moments. This loop's too tight. This loop. ESPNU College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. We are back here. Raining here at Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida. Bethune Cookman in North Carolina A&T. The Aggies with the ball in great shape. First and ten 
from their own 45 yard line their second possession of the game. And here's Lamar Raynard looking near side going deep has a man open and he has Garden who will go in for the touchdown. Chris Garden 55 yards and boom lightning strikes. A free release up the seam from Chris Garden. We know he's an explosive return man but you get him in the open field because of foot race he's going to win. Good job by Raynard throwing a strike, hitting him in stride. Doesn't he have to break stride? You see the safety number 25, Arthur Williams, miscommunication in the secondary for Bethune Cookman, and the Aggies take advantage. And Coach Rod Broadway said that they are going to try to hit some deep balls today to try to make people have a little bit more respect for their passing game. Well, Bethune Cookman has to have some respect after that 55 yard strike. That completes a one play drive in only nine seconds, and just like that, Garden and the Aggies up 7 0. We're back here in Daytona Beach. Coach Terry Sims and his Wildcats of Bethune Cookman down seven nothing early here in the first quarter. And talk about weather being a, a, a real detriment in some instances for this team this year. We were here for week one. We waited about three hours until they finally canceled that one. Then the two hour 46 minute delay against Central. And uh, we had, of course, the hurricane wipe out a game and push it to the end of the season. And uh, we got cloudy, threatening skies today. But as long as we just get rain. And, and this game is played two days after. It's supposed to be originally right. a Thursday night game. And now we're here playing it on a Saturday. And bringing this one out is Kevon Mitchell. And Mitchell gets it out across the 15-yard line before he's brought down. And we have a flag coming from way back on the field, thrown into the action at about the 18-yard line. And see what they sort out here. Seem to come in after the play. There's no foul on the play for a legal block in the back. The block was legal. First down. Well, there's your explanation. No flag. Official thought he saw something and did not. So pick the flag up. Good thing. So, I mean, but it's a good thing if, if there's no penalty there, but. If you call illegal block in the back, then that's what you call. I mean, you push somebody in the back, and I think maybe the play was over with, and uh, it was after the play had happened, and maybe just they saw it as a light shove. Now we have a quick quarterback change here in the second possession for the Wildcats. Larry Brim, the redshirt junior, 5'11", 209, is in at quarterback now. And Brim throwing quickly near side through that one a little bit too early for Jawill Davis as it was by him before he really turned around and looked for it. Yeah, and I think the, the story for Bethune Cookman offensively, this was supposed to be Larry Brim's team this year. Uh, as a starting quarterback, got banged up early, then was, wasn't quite able to get his job back, and they started to move forward with Williams. But the quarterback carousel they've had at Bethune Cookman over the past couple of years, a little bit unsettling. And this year, they just seem completely unsettled at the quarterback. Brim again looking to throw. Now comes near side again and has Jawill Davis who turns and gets first down yardage and then some out across the 35 before he's forced out of bounds at the 36 yard line. A pickup of 19. Well, if Brim can complete some passes, he's the guy that's best suited for this offense because of his threat running the ball. Very effective runner with the football. And if he can become a better passer, higher than his 50% completion percentage, then this offense can click on all cylinders. And the opponents we've met that have gone up against the Aggies this year all believe that they can exploit them through the air, get some stuff going through the passing game, and uh, this is no exception to that rule. The Wildcats think they can do some damage through the air because this team doesn't allow too many people to run the ball effectively. Yeah, the number one rushing defense in the conference and top ten in the nation in rushing defense. So, and that's their philosophy. Right now, they don't mind if you get a couple first downs with some hitch routes. Five-yard completions, they'll let you do that. But once you start getting in the scoring position, then this Aggie defense will tighten it up and you'll see the cornerbacks break cushion. Coach Broadway told us recently, hey, we'll, we'll let them get some short passes in there here and there, but uh, we're not going to break too often. 
And, and this is the philosophy they have on defense. Take away that run, turn your one-dimensional, and make your pass, and now you're playing into their hands. So they do get another first down there on the run off the right side. So move the change for the second time on this march, and now we have a stoppage on the field, a timeout. Uh, we have an injury timeout, actually, Tard McCoy being helped off the field there for a and t mccoy one of the starting cornerbacks 19 tackles so far this season was trying to walk under his own power off the field now he's getting a little help tamadre abram number 14 will come in and replace him at that right cornerback spot Abram is a redshirt sophomore from Lakeland, Florida. They've been aggressive throwing the ball first down. Now with the freshman cornerback in the game and Abram coming in, do you take a chance picking on the backup? Brim off a pump fake going for it all, looking for Jawill Davis and got him. Down the sideline inside the 20 before he's forced out of bounds at the 16-yard line. Nice play and nice throw that time, 37 yards. Beautiful throw by Brim. They went with the double move after setting him up on a couple hitch patterns earlier. I like the route, but I like the throw even better. Nice pump fake there to sell the safety. And look where the location this ball is, right over the right shoulder toward the sideline, perfectly thrown. Nice catch. The Wildcats are inside the 20-yard line. Brim three for four for 64 yards so far in the game. All of them to Mr. Davis. Now going in zone. Did he catch that one-handed? No, he did not. The referee or the official in the back of the end zone is ruling incomplete. He he said he thinks like he did, they he got it. it. Does he not know the call was no touchdown? But you're the field. It's an incomplete pass. Second down. What I like is attach the middle of the field where there's no safety free. Wow, Jaquan he, Loomis look, looks like from this angle that he had that. That's a great catch, but the ruling on the field said he didn't catch it. Is that enough to overturn it? And, I and think I it is. Think, I, think, I think it's... The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The previous play is under review. I, I think he made a fantastic catch, but yeah. you have to be 100% sure right. when you're looking at replay. And the football player in me says, that's a catch. Great job. Held in control. The ball did not move. And that's what I'm looking for. Is there movement of the football once it gets pinned to his chest? That looks not going to show you. But the ball is very secure in there. Let's see. That may be the look there. If we can slow down that second look there. Where he held on to it with one hand. I did not move when he hit the ground. He certainly seemed to have control of it. Yeah, but then that one there, that last we saw, it looked like he brought his other hand up to help secure it. That that left hand, when he turns over, that's a catch. I think that's a catch. <laughs> I think friend. that's a catch. And, 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 and that's a spectacular catch. With somebody draped over him. Lorenz Suttles was back there on the coverage, and pretty decent coverage, but he reached out. All 6'3", 230 pounds of the senior. Reached out with that right hand, brought it in, batted it to himself. Yeah, I thought it, you know, I thought it was a spectacular catch. And you would hope that they would see that in the replay booth to say, yeah, ball might touch the ground, but he had that ball securely and it did not move. I did not see the ball move. That's why I think that they should make this a touchdown. Every review, the rule on the field has changed. The receiver maintained control of the ball and completed the catch. It's a touchdown. And that's what replay's there for. If you get it right, you know, I can understand why the official on the field thought it might have been a bobble, but this is just a great catch with one hand. He keeps one hand on it the whole time to secure the football. <laughs> that's just saying, I'm finally catching a break here. Right. That, that, is, that is definitely the facial expression of a coach 
that could use a break or two. Six play, 83-yard drive, and the extra point by Hernandez is good. So we are tied. 7-7 seven, seven here, 9.29 to go in the first quarter. And Bethune-Cookman, the whole school, of course, they've had activities this week as the students return to this campus. 4,100 students. The marching band, of course, the pride right here. And they have some great cheers that my partner, Jay Walker, has taught me now, since we've been Imagine this. You see the numbers here, right? Right. Now, 4,100 students, the smallest school in the Mid-East Athletic Conference, but one of the more dominating ones on the football field over the past couple of years. 4,100 students. They have a band sometimes that has 400 members in it. Now, my Howard math says that's about 10% of the school <laughs> is involved in the band. And, and yeah. they're one of the best. If you haven't seen the pride, they are worth the price of admission. One of the most active bands you'll see. And it's a fantastic program they built here at Bethune Cookman. And speaking of the pride, there they are. Pumped up after that touchdown. I like to call them the White Hats, because they always wear the White Hats. And short kickoff up the far side of the field. And it Look is out. Bobble there is a loose ball and a free ball. That's Bethune-Cookman Bethune football. And Bethune-Cookman may have caught another break. They do on the kickoff. The big mistake by number 23, Amos Williams, a return man, trying to catch that ball in a full sprint and was not able to catch it cleanly. Ball went on the ground and good recovery. Caleb Holmes was in there on the recovery. Very dangerous situation as he tries to catch that one. Perfectly placed though, nobody was there. Yep. So your deep receiver has to run up about 15, 20 yards to try to make the catch and he couldn't do it. Well, look out, you, know, you asked me before the game, is this the upset type of environment? We know Bethune Cookman's a desperate team. Yep. A desperate team that caught some tough breaks this year. Over, class, over cloudy day, overcast skies, cloudy day, kind of dreary. Long bus trip for the Aggies to get down here. First charge timeout. Almost 11 timeout. hours to get here by bus, and they need to wake up a little bit because Bethune is going to make it tough on them. But Bethune takes a timeout. Uh, Larry Brim, the quarterback, the last drive was 4 or 5 for 80 yards in that spectacular touchdown catch by Jaquan Loomis to tie it after... The Aggies got on the board with a 55-yard strike to Chris Garden. So both teams feeling pretty good about themselves offensively right now as they've been able to move it down the field. As we talked about earlier, many opponents, including Bethune, think they can do some damage in the air if the quarterbacks get time to throw the ball against this stingy defense. Sure, I think Hampton kind of showed a format where you can find some yards on this defense in their secondary. And Bethune's come out with a great job of exploiting them on that last drive. Now let's see if they continue to stay aggressive after the turnover, throwing the football. Good news for the Aggie defense, Tard McCoy, who was helped off the field last series for Bethune-Cookman, is now back in the game at that cornerback spot. Brim, under some pressure, steps up and gets rid of it, and I don't think his receiver even knew it was coming. But he was under heavy pressure by number 91, Kenneth Melton, got in there to cause some problems with that round. And what AT is doing right now is saying, you want to throw the ball, we're going to get a hit on the quarterback. So they're playing man-to-man -man coverage across the board, lining up in man. And now, good job by Bethune Cookman going to some type of trip, triple formation on the bottom, trips. Hard to play that type of man coverage versus that trips. So they'll go to some type of zone blitz. Blitz coming, and the pass underneath it is complete down at the 20-yard line. That'll be about three and a half yards short of the first down. Seven yards on the pickup as he found Frank Brown once again. Easily his favorite target so far in this game. Yeah, good job squeezing. They had the zone blitz called and you saw Deion Jones was buzzing over underneath the hot route. Just missed an interception. Now we get whistles on the field. We had a lot of movement in the interior of the Aggies' defensive line. And uh, start. offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, third down. And I guess they got back in time and created a false start penalty. And that's just something you can't do if you're Bethune Cookman. 
You, you special teams play, got you the ball back. Third and four is great. Third and nine percentage chances go down if you converting. When you got a team and you're trying to deliver a, a blow to them, can't make the mental error of jumping off sides. Joe Busarev, the person who flinched inside at one of the guard positions. Middle of the field open. They're going to bring pressure on the quarterback with the blitz. And here they come off the edge. Going end zone is Brim. And off the left hand of his intended target down there. He was looking for Jawil Davis. Yeah, and what a throw by Larry Brim. Jeremy Taylor's going to come off the edge and put a hit on Brim. But Brim stood tall in the pocket, delivered a catchable Ooh. ball that should have been caught by the wide receiver. And Uriel Hernandez is going to come on and attempt a 42-yard field goal. And uh, from that distance this year, he has not attempted a kick. His range would be about in this area. Plenty of leg on that one, and it is going to be wide to the left. No good. Pulled it just a bit. Looked like one of my golf shots. <laughs> anyway, we are still tied at 7, 8.20 to go here in the first quarter. <laughs> Municipal Stadium, Daytona Beach, Florida, Bethune, Cookman, and North Carolina A&T tied at 7. The Aggies with the ball on their own 26-yard line, first and 10 after the missed field goal. And the keeper, Lamar Reynard, and Reynard gets pretty decent yardage, up close to the 30-yard line on the quarterback keeper. He got four. Let's, let's go back for a sec. Bethune Cookman's 0-4, right? You get great special teams play. Get your ball on your own 30-yard line. You've got third and four to convert, to keep the drive alive, maybe put seven on the board. Offside penalty, put you back. Miss field goal, tie game, all for not. Right. That's the difference between championship teams the teams that are struggling right now this year going 0-4. And, and there's no question this Bethune-Cookman team has a lot of talent. 15 players have placed on the preseason all-conference teams. Three yards gained on that play as Tariq Cohen goes off the far side. And so the talent is here. They're still waiting. What did you call it? That guy. They're still waiting for that guy, those guys to step up and consistently make plays for it yeah, on both it's, sides. Whether it's on yeah, defense or offense. Defense, this was always one of the toughest, hard hit teams you were going to face. You knew when you played them, it was going to be a battle for four quarters. Hasn't been the case this year. But I do believe that you're going to see their best effort versus Tariq Cohen today. It's going to be a tough job in the office for him. And Cohen darts around tacklers. And it will get first down yardage, with that's all on his own. He picked up five. He darted left, darted back right, spun around, and next thing you know, the pile is moving for first down. And that's why he's special. He makes three or four guys miss every carry. And we say if they had a great line, he would be even more dominating. Creates a lot of yardage on his own, making two would-be tacklers miss. And now look at this, this, this versatility. Now he's going to flex out at the top of your screen and show you that he can play. A little bit of wide receiver for you. Cohen coming in motion and gets it. Trying to get the edge. Spins off a tackle. And gets out across the 40 when he could have easily been tackled for at least no gain or maybe a loss. Turns it into a pickup of three. <laughs> Trying to develop this play. Watch him set up the fullback. This is what you want to see, the patience. Sets up the fullback, but... Fullback gets a decent block, but the wide receiver not able to hold the block. A play that could have easily lost four or five yards. He found a way to gain three or four yards. I'd go back to that play at some point in this football game and tell those wide receivers you must maintain those blocks. Raynard, good time in the pocket. Going deep. Look out. Overthrew it. The only guy with a real chance to catch it was back deep in coverage. Uh, cornerback, Elliot Miller, and we do have a flag on the play right at the 37-yard line. Offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty, second down. 
Josh Maddox, 6'3", 332-pound redshirt junior out of Swansboro, North Carolina, with the hold. So that'll back him up even further. Let's take a look where the hole would be in our that's Maddox. They have him playing center. With the hole right in the middle. Second down now in 17 for Lamar Reynard and the Aggies offense. And a little wide receiver screen on the far side. Some good blocking out in front. But a good play made on the defensive side to stop that one from being a potential big game for Michael Weaver. Instead, he picks up eight. They still have the team speed, but Bethel Cookman. That means it's going to be very hard to beat them sideline to sideline. So when you try the wide receiver bubble screens or the sweeps, the jet sweeps that are so popular in today's college football landscape, Bethel Cookman has always had the team speed able to get there and minimize those gains, and I think you saw it on that last play. On third and nine. And Reynard has his man across midfield and gets down to the 47-yard line. Michael Weaver again on the reception for 14 and a first down. Okay, Michael Weaver, two consecutive catches. So you see Weaver line up in the slot, does a little wheel route, stops, back shoulder, and the safety, Arthur Williams, takes a poor angle to get there. First down for the Aggies. Reynard keeps, now throws downfield, has his man open. He's got his tight end, Leroy Hill, and Hill gets down inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Give him 21 more and another first down. And that's a good job of playing the quarterback position by Lamar Reynard. If he can play at this type of level, this offense becomes deadly. They average 37 points a game, but they would average even so much more if he can just make plays like that on a consistent basis because they see a lot of man-to-man -man coverage because of the threat of Tariq Cohen in the backfield. Again, their coaches want to open things up with passes down the field and make defenses be a little more respectful of that passing part of the attack as he hits Denzel Keys. They're a veteran senior receiver, 6'4", 215, out on the near side for good yardage on first downs. Keys, one of the guys they like to go to in the red zone. Those one-on-one -on -one jump ball opportunities. But look at the attention. They've got four wide receivers in the game right now. But look at the attention Tariq Cohen still gets. They still have six bodies around the line of scrimmage and people peeking in the backfield. And on the quarterback keeper, Raynard with room up the middle. And Raynard dives down to the 15-yard line for nine yards and they'll move the sticks once again. Another first down for the Aggies. And this has been a good drive by the supplemental parts of the North Carolina a t offense. Weaver with a couple big catches. We're seeing Raynard make good decisions from the quarterback position. Good sign for head coach Rob Broadway and offensive coordinator Chip Hester. Approaching the three minute mark here in the first quarter. Tenth play of the drive coming up. And we have some whistles and a little bit of movement on behalf of a and Offense, 84. Five-yard penalty. First down. Elijah Bell with a little movement before the play started that time. Bell's going to be a good one. Freshman from Wheeling Park, West Virginia. They say he's got big-time potential. The true freshman has come in here and made an immediate impact. 15 catches on the season already. There's Garden in motion, and he's there to take the swing pass. And Garden trying to get the corner. Gets down to about the 18-yard line where he picked up three yards on the play. And that'll make it second down and about 12. And I still think you, you keep the three or four wide receiver look and throw the football. If Bethune Cookman is not going to allow Tariq Cohen to hurt you this drive, and they're not. They're keeping everybody close to the line of scrimmage within five yards. There's some opportunities on the outside.
Off the play fake. And boy, they the hat is thrown there, and so is a penalty oh. flag as they fight along the far side. And both this, the, this is tough. Yeah, both the receiver and defender both were out it, of bounds when that ball it, was thrown. It was great man-to-man. -man. Defense, number seven, spot foul, automatic first down. This is great man-to-man -man defense at the top of your screen. You're going to see him play one-on-one. -on -one. He's going to push him out of bounds, which you're allowed to do. This is the matchup you're going to see at the top of your screen. Watch him ride him out of bounds. This is a good job forcing him out of bounds. Nice shove. You can do that. They get into it. And he marked him out of bounds, which you have to do with the hat, but the penalty as well. Tough Same. break. Say a little bit too, uh, too much contact to force him out of bounds, I guess. This drive, Reynard is 6-6 six six for 53 yards so far on the drive as we're inside the 10-yard line. On first down, and Reynard on the keeper. Won't have yeah. much to, to get uh, on the outside that time as he's forced out of bounds. No gain. Uh, and Bethune Cookman giving AT a dose of their own medicine. AT likes to sell out to stop the run. Well, right now, Bethune Cookman is selling out to stop the run, no matter who the ball carrier is, whether it's Cohen or Raynard. Man to man coverage, eight guys around the line of scrimmage. Let's see, they're doing a substitution right now. They don't care who you substitute. They're like, okay, that's fine, but we're going to keep one more guy in the box to stop the run and play man to man coverage across the board. Reynard looking in zone, has a man open and got him. Michael Weaver wide open for the touchdown, and the Aggies have taken the lead back. And that's the type of quarterback play that they need. Great job by Reynard delivering the football, making smart decisions where to go with the football. You're going to see this is going to be a natural little in and out route. Doesn't have to be clean, a little spin route to the outside. Finds the end zone. Michael Weaver, not exactly what you call a big target, all of 5'7", 163-pound senior. Out of James City, North Carolina, as the extra point goes through. And the eight-yard touchdown catch helps the Aggies go up 14-7. Nice time in the pocket to sit strong, deliver a catchable ball. More importantly, good job by Michael Weaver of finding the end zone and the soft spot in the defense. All right, we want you to check out the undefeated.com for reaction from President Obama's trip to North Carolina A&T on Tuesday. A full replay is available on Watch ESPN. And partner, you were there. It must have been quite an awesome experience to see the president in that kind of up close and personal setting at the kind of town meeting that they held there. It, it, it was a store. It was a store. I thought uh, the folks in Greensboro, you know, Greensboro is such a historic city, right. like the civil rights. They did a good job of having him come on the campus, the dialogue, the conversation. I was just glad to be a part of it, right. to witness it. You know, a lot of people there, but when the president's there, you don't really need any more star power. Right. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, Doug Williams was there, and they had uh, Bomani Jones was there, a number of us so-called celebrities in yeah. the stand. But when Barack is there, he's the star. Stan Barrett from Howard University. I thought that was a good call to have an alumnus of an HBCU moderate if you're going to be on an HBCU campus. And the kickoff fielded at about the two and brought out across the 15 to the 18-yard line. And that was Kevon Mitchell on that return. And that's where Bethune Cookman will take over. And let's see if they can still continue to move that ball as they have with a little more up-tempo offense and the, the short passing game working. Yeah, that's what you have to do when, when another team responds. And let's keep in mind, Bethune should have been up, but they weren't. And a and is a good team going to make you pay for not putting points on the board. Now the pressure goes back to this Wildcat offense. And you have to continue to throw the football. That's what the Aggies are giving you. Larry Brim, Jr., 5 of 8 for 86 yards in that spectacular touchdown to Jaquan Loomis. Earlier in the game to tie it up at seven. Here's Brim stepping up in the pocket, running out of time, and now he's out of time as we have flags on the play as well. Got a face pass. The Maybe. sack will take him down at the 15. We'll see how they sort it out. Great job of collapsing the pocket with the blitz. 
face mask. Defense, number 34. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. See the blitz and linebacker, Deion Jones. He's going to get to the quarterback, flush him out, but grabs him by the face mask. And that's going to be an automatic first down. Easy call by the umpire there. His job is to protect the quarterback. He wears the long braids, too. Sometimes you wonder if he grabbed a braid or two. <laughs> that's part to of the uniform. Yank the head around. That's part of the uniform. That would not yeah, be a call. But I guess the official saw face mask. That's what we get. Ball out to the 33. First and 10. Here's Brim, quick pass. Gets it in the seam as he finds his receiver, John Tavius Carter, for good yardage. And another first down as they'll move the sticks. 11 yards on that play. So they found something that's working a little bit right now against this defense. Yeah, throwing the ball, quick passes, not holding on to it for a long time. And what they've been doing is throwing underneath and then going for the double move whenever the Aggies get a little frustrated with them moving the football. Quick slant pattern is off the hands of Carter that time. And incomplete. So 16 seconds left here in the opening quarter. And it'll be second and 10 for the uh, Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. Yeah, I think what teams don't realize is what a good tackling bunch this is for North Carolina AT. While they'll give up the completions underneath, rarely do we see them miss a tackle. Long on the far side, and it is incomplete. Knocked away in the secondary. Jeremy Taylor getting out there from his linebacker spot. Yeah, that's great coverage. Anytime you can get a wide receiver versus a linebacker in the open field like that, advantage offense. But a good job by Jeremy Taylor showing versatility from his linebacker position to knock that ball away. Bethune now 0 and 2 going into this third down 0 4 2 I should say going into this third down and 10 situation with 10 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Reverse man to man coverage what you're seeing right now see he's telling you they're playing man to man. The slot receiver's telling you that. Look for a crossing route. You don't want to settle for vertical routes. Graham gets out of trouble and has some room on the near side and he'll go out of bounds. Oh he went to go short. Yard line and he'll be close. Depending on the spot. Wow. Are they going to give it to him? That, that's close because he could have easily had it had he just lunged forward. But he did not see a first down marker on that sideline. End of the running. first quarter. And that's the end of the first quarter. Looked like Grimm was short of the first down. We'll find out as we start the second in just a moment with the Aggies of North Carolina a &T leading Bethune Cookman by seven. Back here in Daytona Beach, Florida, Municipal Stadium, where North Carolina A&T leads Bethune-Cookman by seven. As we begin the second quarter, Larry Brim, plenty of room as he escapes some pressure on the quarterback run play. And he just took himself out of bounds. Less than a yard short of first down yardage. And it looks like being 0 for 7 on fourth downs coming into the season I'd watch with field position. They are in punt formation right now. I'd watch the fake right here if you're North Carolina a &T. They only need a yard. And the left-footed rugby-style punt is fielded and fair caught by Garden. Now, now this play becomes huge. On third down, he's running. Breaks the pocket, does a good job. Now watch him ease up on this run and head for the sideline. He was a yard short. If he gets that yard, they keep the football, keep the drive alive, maybe put points on the board. Instead, you give it back to a dangerous a and offense, and you wonder why that record says 0-4. Yeah, it looks like he thought he had enough for it. 
But you stretch the ball out or something just in case. Yeah, and when you don't know, if, if, you, if you think it's close, <laughs> then dive forward. Yep, Leave turn it feet. up field. Lamar Reynard leads his Aggies offense. First and 10 from their own 13-yard line. And Tariq Cohen got some room. Bounces outside. And Cohen breaks into the secondary. Are you One man me? to beat. Look at this weapon. Tariq Cohen, touchdown. You go, boy. A good team is going to make you pay. Knew it was going to be a tough day at the office. He found one crease, and that's a wrap. And people wondered how fast is Tariq Cohen. Look him bounce to the sideline, and look how many angles he outrun. I'm not going to put a wiggle on you. It's a foot race, and he outruns the entire defense of Bethune-Cookman, and this is a Florida defense. We talked about that team speed. How much speed does Tariq Cohen have? Elliot Miller, the cornerback, had a great angle, and Cohen just outran it. 87 yards on that touchdown. Tariq Cohen's 10th career touchdown run of 70 yards or longer, and it never gets less exciting. Always more. The Aggies up by 14. This well, we talked about the Aggies offensive line play not being great at times, but this is a fantastic job by the offensive line. Reach blocks here, but more importantly, a great job by the center. Dario Mack making contact, getting to the second level, and this guard has to look here in order to give the running lane for Tariq Cohen. They did just enough getting in the way, makes a miss, and the rest is a Tariq Cohen show, baby. Get your popcorn and pizza and everything ready. Well, he's just getting started. Uh, the all-time MEAC leader in rushing yards, 4,800. He has five rushes for 99 on the afternoon. His first run, minus one, and then five yards, three yards, five yards, and, oh, by the way, 87. In, in the open, we did call him the ultimate weapon in FCS football, right? Absolutely. Seen a lot of football in my time. Seen a lot. This kid is special. Kickoff comes down right at the goal line. And a lot of room. Across the 30, trying to get more and a great return up to about the 40-yard line. As on that return is Kevon Mitchell, 41 yards. So Bethune-Cookman has great field position to try to strike back and get back into this ball game down by two scores. And they got to get it going, and it's the small things that they're not doing well. They've got to convert on third down. They've got to make catches on balls. a t is the number one team in HBCU football for a reason. When you're trying to pull off the upset, you must play your A game. Bethune Cookman's playing probably about a B minus level right now. Larry Brim has been on at quarterback since the second series for the Wildcats. Akevius Williams started the game, played one series. And we have not seen him back the signal caller spot yet. Many a time. Now he runs out of it. And down he goes, the first one to get to him. Looked like 94, Justin Cates, or 34, Deion Jones. They might have both been in there, but it's a sack for a six-yard loss. I do believe it was Justin Cates, 94. They confused him with the look in the secondary. At the end, you saw him look to the sideline, what play to call. And during that time, North Carolina A&T dropped off in the soft zone coverage, doubling two of the wide receivers. No place to go with the football. So on second down now, Coach Terry Sims and his quarterback Larry Brim trying to dial up a play to get some of it back. Goes far side, open receiver, and a lot of green in front before he goes out of bounds. And that's Frank Brown, who has been Brim's favorite target, and Brown picks up 11 back. So it'll be third and five. And this is where they are. You see 24% on the season. Near the bottom of FCS, only 121 FCS programs, and 0 for 3 today. They need this one now. Loseman, Loseman, you? Brim Got pulls it back down, tries to dive for it. He'll be at least a couple yards short, but we have a flag in. Might be another face mask down there. As he started the dive, it looked like a big hand reached out and pulled that face mask just a little bit.
Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 95, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Julian McKnight was the one who committed the face mask infraction right there. Yeah, the quarterback was leaving his feet, didn't need to grab him, but you can't stop that aggression from your defensive line and Boone Cookman pick up the first down via penalty. But you have to be concerned because they brought two weak side linebackers on the blitz. Brim didn't see the blitz. Brim far side this time. And Jawill Davis catches it out there and tries to dive for the first down. He is going to be about a half yard short or so. So it'll be second and short as they use that quick passing attack once again to move the ball down the field with the help, of course, the face mask penalty. And Davis is a good one. He seems to be playing with a sense of urgency. The junior from Miami, Florida, is used to winning. He's not used to what he's seen take place here on the field. You can tell. His leadership starting to show as he's given that extra effort. And he's among the fastest receivers in the Bethune Cookman squad. Bouncing off tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Finally brought down for no gain on that running play. One of few we've seen from the Wildcats so far this afternoon. Which has and been smart <laughs> because that's why. They tried to run the ball and we were very fortunate that wasn't a tackle for loss. Great job by the running back. This me. But it's hard to run against the Aggies. They're as good as advertised on run defense. The committee of three running backs get the bulk of the carrier. The carries here for Bethune Cookman. Tupac Ismi, one of those. Brim comes near side off the hands of his intended receiver and nearly intercepted as he was looking for Frank Brown on that play. He points to himself and says, I should have had that one. Meantime, almost getting the interception was to Madre Abram. Then he's saying, calm down. We have to make this catch. They anticipated the blitz, got the look they wanted. Make the catch first and then put a move. It seemed like he was trying to adjust his body before he made the catch. And now Bethune Cookman going for it on fourth down. Has three drops so far in the game for Cookman wide receivers. Brim. Looks over the middle and has his man. It'll be good enough for first down yardage as they'll move the chains down to the 23 yard line to pick up a five on that key fourth down play. And if I calculate right, that's their, fourth, their first fourth down conversion all season. Well, this, they're finding some creases in the zone coverage by North Carolina AT in the passing game, utilizing the underneath passing routes. Big time delay play. Ball handed. It looked like a pass for certain, but handed off instead to the halfback, and he gets no gain on that play. And that's a great job by defense, the defensive line, because they kept their gap control. So often, when you get that type of draw play delay, you lose your gap and they hit you for a big play. Didn't even fool this AT defensive line. Very solid bunch of. That's a championship caliber defensive line they have in Greensboro. Rim under pressure, throwing their side, throwing end zone. And that one falls harmlessly incomplete as there were three white shirts and one gray shirt in the area he was throwing that ball to. You can see, Jamie Wilson just went deep on one. He's the 50 year senior, number one. And he takes himself out the game. 20 yard deep route. If you want to win and you're a starting wide receiver, you stay in the game in the red zone. Tenth play of the drive coming up, third and ten. And getting a change of play from the sideline and offense coordinator Jim Pry and company. And so Wildcats could use a touchdown on this drive to get back in it. Brim, far side. That one is complete. As he gets his receiver, That's Jawill Davis. Davis on the far side. And Davis tried to pull away from the tackle, but picked up 12 and the first down on that play. Remember I told you earlier in this drive, I saw it from Davis. He's got that sense of urgency. Runs a nice out route ball, thrown a little bit on the inside, but made the adjustment to make the catch. 
And those are the type of efforts you're going to have to have when you take on this stingy Aggie defense. Davis with five catches for 85 yards this afternoon. And that one, he had a receiver open on the far side, threw it behind him a little bit as he was looking for Jamie Wilson. But that one's incomplete. Give credit, they continue, and I really like what Brim is doing. He's going to the open wide receiver on most of his dropbacks, picking apart the zone coverage on the underneath routes, intermediate routes, as we like to call them. Well, option play and blown up in the backfield. That time for a loss. Marcus Albert was there for a loss of six to stop that one before it even got started on the option pitch. This is great team defense. I mean, the quarterback has to pitch at the D lineman hits him, makes him stutter, and then good job by Ark Albert coming up from his linebacker position to make the tackle for a loss. And numbers don't lie. It's just hard to run the football against a fundamentally sound, strong, quick defense like North Carolina A&T. Wildcats one for five on third downs in the game, and this is third and 17. Graham fires, touchdown! Boy, he shot that one out of a cannon to Frank Brown. 18 yards, and Bethune Cookman back in it. Look, if you're gonna move the ball, it's gotta be in the air. You got to attack the secondary. Nice, firm throw by Larry Brim. The touchdown. Frank Brown. I'm mean, gonna watch Brim stick this throw. Firm. The safety coming underneath. Not able to make it. The subtle to number nine. Lockhart over the top. Gets there a step too late. And the extra point is good by Uriel Hernandez. And just what the Wildcats needed a touchdown back in it. It's 21 14. And Larry Brim fires it right. Time for the AT&T Inside Access. Let's take a look at Bethune-Cookman students gathering last night to celebrate the reopening of campus after Hurricane Matthew. They are calling the resiliency of the student body here at Bethune-Cookman and the city of Daytona Beach and the surrounding areas. BC United, if they are not going to let the after effects of Hurricane Matthew stop this show at this great historically black college university, Bethune-Cookman. And the student body pretty happy after that touchdown march. And this kickoff coming up short, fielded at the 11-yard line by Amos Williams and Williams gets out across the 30 before he's brought down on the return. Three possessions and three scores for a &T. Last times we've seen them with the football. That last scoring drive, by the way, for Bethune Goodman, 15 plays, 59 yards, took 547 and that 18 yard scoring strike uh, came on third and 17. As Bucks can see the Aggie offense has been relying on the big play so far today for their 21 points. Lamar Reynard leading his offensive unit out on first down at the 30. And the play clock runs down to zero. Play game. Offense. Five yard penalty. First down. I don't think Reynard even saw it. It was at about nine seconds as he got the signal in from the sideline as to what to do. Yeah, I guess he figures Tariq Cohen will get the yards back. <laughs> Easy to take him for granted if he plays on your side, I guess. 
fifth penalty, 47 yards for A&T so far in this game. And then quick pass to the outside. Denzel Keys gets it for a gain of seven. Good job by answering by the Wildcats. And once again, the Aggies, just with the seven-point lead, keeps the pressure on them, forcing them to continue to produce points. Produce some points, give that defense a little bit of a rest. And this is Tariq Cohen. Cohen bounces outside, gets the corner, and goes out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Call it the 36. And he picked up five on that play, and it'll set up third down and about four to go for the Aggies. Cohen with 104 yards so far in the game on six carries. This is 25th career 100 yard rushing game by the way the Aggies 19 and 5 in his previous 24 100 yard efforts here's Cohen first down yard out across the 40 to the 41 yard line he picked up five more there I imagine if you're a defensive player a guy five six five seven behind big offensive linemen might even be tough to pick up and he uses the size well really lowers the shoulder pad level effectively and we have an injured Wildcat down in the field right at the 43 yard line in the seated position. Being helped up by a teammate. It's number 50, Demarcus Womack. He's the big run stuffer. 6'3, 348 senior out of Orlando, but fortunately walking off the field under his own power. In a game like this, you need the, you need the mass. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. Tariq Cohen. Darting all over the field. You need that 350 pound defensive tackle there. And also, I saw on the sideline, Daquan Richardson. He's their best defensive player in the secondary. He's the guy that had to find Tariq Cohen at times, lead tackler for this football team from the safety position. Very active junior. He's over on the sideline as well. So you lose a nose tackle, and you've got a safety that's trying to get his ankle taped up so he can get back in the game. The injury bug continues to hurt Bethune Cookman this 2016 season. 12 regular starters have missed time due to injury so far this season for Coach Terry Sims. A couple of them starters and hit just as he released that football was Lamar Raynard. And fortunately for him, it wasn't intercepted as it had nothing on it coming out toward his intended receiver as he was looking for Michael Weaver. Uh, Radar not able to really step into the throw, gets turned around a little bit. They found something there when they line up Weaver in the slot, taking outside release. The safeties for Bethune Cookman a little bit slow, getting over. Raynard throws to the far side. That one just got over an outstretched hand of a defensive lineman who was rushing in only picked up two as Denzel Keys make the catch so it'll be third and long another third and long and they're getting away from going to Tariq Cohen <laughs> well, it's gotten easier said than done here you know, from us in the booth not calling plays but he's the best football player on the field I'm finding ways to get him the football Cohen's in the slot on the top of your screen And he found his receiver on a little crossing route, Elijah Bell. But Bell brought down immediately, maybe picked up a yard on that, and a key third down stop for the Wildcats of the Yeah, uh, Tariq Cohen was a great decoy for those series there. After finding his rhythm, he elected to go away from him, maybe falling in love with the pass. Now they're going to put the ball back to the Wildcats. Frank Brown standing back at his 12-yard line to receive the punt of Steven Sawicki. Averages almost 41 yards per punt this season. And Sawicki with a wobbly line drive type kick. And it gets a favorable bounce. And it'll be downed inside the 10-yard line at about the 7-yard line. We do have a flag on the play as well. 48-yard punt after that roll. 
That flag was thrown from the sideline of Bethune Cookman, not on the wow. field. On the sideline, so probably something that happened on Sportsman like over on that sideline. Yeah, headlinesman was pointing to the Bethune bench. During the kick, personal foul, receiving team, number 16, unnecessary roughness, half the distance to the goal, first down, timeout. So the Wildcats will be backed up a little bit further. They're going to try to put a drive together. Down by seven. Back here, and Larry Brim has been a spark plug at the quarterback position since he entered the game. Well, he's been throwing strikes short of all the throws. A fantastic touch with a perfectly goal thrown ball to Davis. And then going over the top to his tight end, taking where the weakness of the defense is in the middle of the field. This is just a strike thrown for the last score to Frank Brown. And Larry Brim's out there dealing from the pocket. Not running the ball uh, for much is that's not a surprise against the stingy run defense. But Brim, 11 for 19 for 155 passing yards with a couple touchdowns for Coach Terry Sims. And I think what's surprising about it is the effectiveness that they've had throwing the football. This Wildcat offense averages 117 yards passing per game. They've easily eclipsed that and they've looked pretty good throwing the football. out of his own end zone strike over the middle once again has his receiver and he is taken down immediately after the catch at the 17 yard line where forward progress was stopped that's Traveris Copeland on the reception now look at him just going through his progression receiver flashes hits him in between the safety and the linebackers looks very comfortable in the pocket right now which is uncharacteristic against a team playing North Carolina a &T. Remember, he set out the first series in favor of Akevius Williams, but has been on ever since, and again, been a spark plug. Comes near side with another well-thrown ball with the same target, Traveris Copeland, and more positive yardage as he picks up about six on that first down catch. And it's the speed of the wide receivers for Bethune Cookman that has North Carolina a and worry about blitzing. Because they've got some guys that can hit you, Frank Brown and Will Davis. Those guys can fly, forcing a &T to be a little bit more conservative with their coverage. And now they're going to straight man-to-man -man covers, tired of giving up the underneath stuff. See, this is the safety down here in the slot, guarding the tight end one-on-one. -on -one. And he lobs that one toward the far sideline and into double coverage. And the intended receiver that time was John Tavius Carter on the far side as he was covered. That's it. They change up the look. So instead of the soft zone, they see a press man to man coverage with free safety help. Follow the eyes of the quarterback. They'll probably go back to that look again. The Wildcats have converted their last two third down opportunities. trying to buy himself some time and keep it on the ground, but he ran out of time in a hurry and was swarmed under for a loss on that play. That'll be a call to sack. And the Aggies defense remains stingy and will force the turnover on downs should Bethune-Cookman follow through with the punt here. And a great job by the Aggies changing up their formation and their coverages. They got away from Zone coverage went to hard press man to man and really confused Bethune Cookman threw off the rhythm. Jonathan Cagles who strike this punt from about his own 10 yard line. He's punting deep to Chris Garden, one of the better punt returners in all of FCS college football. High end over end punt. Garden takes it and is met and snowed under immediately. He got nothing on that return as the special teams were down there in a hurry. To put him down, the ball will be spotted at the 38-yard line for forward progress. 39 yards, minus three on the return. Back and more the second with the Aggies up by seven. Sundays at 11 on ESPN. We're in Daytona Beach, Florida. 
where North Carolina A&T leads Bethune Cookman late in the second quarter, 21-14. Take a quick look at the MEAC standings right now and Central undefeated and A&T. Two teams that are about where you expected them to be preseason and coming into yeah, the season. Yeah, and Morgan State doing a good job rebounding. They take on Hampton today. It'll be interesting to see what happens in that matchup there. But everybody's falling in love with North Carolina's A&T. And South Carolina State struggled. But beware the Eagles, North Carolina Central. Reynard, the deep pass along the near side on the rollout. Threw that one away out of bounds as Denzel Keyes was his intended receiver. And he, you know, you saw those stand at South Carolina State play three money games, three of them. So they get off to 0-3 start, all the Bulldogs are bad. Well, now they're in conference play, still undefeated in conference. And Buddy Pugh may be up to something. They got to show me something there between at South Carolina State, though, this year. And Tariq Cohen goes deep to try to bounce it outside, and he's got nowhere to go. He's going to lose some yardage on that play. And, and you hear the crowd, man. I've never seen a, a college football team with a hype man. And Bethune Cookman has her own hype man <laughs> with the microphone on the sideline, waving towels, getting them going. It's kind of a unique, unique spin to the college football experience here at Bethune Cookman. And Cohen lost four on that play. So it'll be third down and long. Call it third and 14. For the Aggies from their own 33. Reynard has Cohen on the near side. Cohen across midfield and has first down yardage. And he has great speed. I mean, there was a linebacker closing in. He just pulled away from him easily. And, and that's what the NFL scouts want to see. He has the ability to do. Five yard, they call it a check down route. He got the ball in open space, accelerated quickly, and able to pick up a first down. Talked to Coach Broadway before the game and said, how great is it to have a guy like that playing for you instead of you game planning to play against a guy like that? And he says, oh, you wouldn't believe it. How many times that we use him as a decoy and his mere presence allows us to do other things. Cohen up the middle. Cohen leaping and bounding his way inside the 35 to the 33-yard line for another 14 yards. The vision of Tariq Cohen on display here. You're going to see when he first gets this, the initial hole's not there, but able to change directions. And, and this is what I like, man. Take what he sees it. Uh, I don't like that hole. Let me find the middle. Then explodes in a hurry and picks up the first down. He has everything that you need in a great running back. Reynard on the quick slant pattern. He was looking for Denzel Keys and off his hands incomplete. The, uh, the people want to know can he block it all? He's got a hot read on the blitz, comes across the formation. Great job. His man did not get in the face of a quarterback and he had to make that adjustment quickly. So that lets you know he knows his pass protection responsibility. The only chink in the armor on Tariq Cohen, something he can't control. I mean, he's five, six and a half, five, seven. If he had another three inches, talk about the first round draft pick for sure. And he faked the coin one way and set up the quick screen the other. And they got it to Amos Williams. And Williams looked like he had some blocking set up, but a nice open field play on behalf of the defender, Jeremy Davis, to stop that one from being a big game. They have a good job on the defense by Bethune Cookman, but they were fortunate because the Aggies set him up. They had a wide receiver running wide open in the middle of the field that Raynard was not able to locate. On third and eight, approaching a minute to go here in the first half. Aggies trying to add to the seven point lead. Raynard throwing into heavy coverage. It's intercepted off the deflection. And brought down right at the 20-yard line. Now we have some extracurricular stuff back in the area where the ball was thrown. So we have a couple flags down there. Let's see how they sort it out. The ruling on the field is an interception. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 55. Half the distance to the goal. First down. That's number 55's first foul. 
Todney Evans, number 55, and DeWan Jackson. Up and take a look at the interception. Have to find another pick. place to go with the football. Three jerseys there, balls up for grab in no man's land. Go someplace else with the ball. I mean, that's well covered. Going there late in the interception. Cohen there, we see he can tackle too. He made the open field tackle. But then a penalty by Bethune Cookman. At the end of the play, personal foul is going to give him tough field position with under a minute to go before the half. Well, they're going to have to run the one minute offense right now. 58 seconds to go. They've been running a pretty quick tempo ever since Brim took over at the quarterback spot after their first series. And they're just going to hand this one up the middle. Good yardage. Out across the 15 to the 18 yard line is the running back Jamaris Tompkins, one of the trio of uh, ball carriers that handles the bulk of the rushing attempts for the Wildcats of Coach Terry Sims. Another running play as they're just going to take this one into the halftime locker room. It looks like down by seven, at least unless they get some big favorable uh, break of some kind, either a long run or a long pass play. So, and this is smart. Run the ball now. See if you can see some chinks in the armor of the Aggie run defense that maybe you can exploit in the second half. They're going to be content to even not even snap the ball and just take this game into halftime. Bethune Cookman, remember, won the toss and they deferred to open the game, so they'll get the ball first in the second half. And that'll do it. Pretty exciting plays we've seen so far between these two MEAC opponents. North Carolina AT carrying a 21 to 14 lead into the halftime locker room, and the Aggies 37 and 1 when leading at the half under coach Rod Broadway. And now we're getting ready to see the entertaining bands and we're gonna entertain you with a little give me five and some more stuff from my partner Jay Walker coming up in a few. Back in Daytona Beach, Florida, Municipal Stadium, Bethune Cookman, the host Wildcats trailing North Carolina AT 21-14 at the half. Back up here in the booth with my man Jay Walker, former NFL quarterback. I am Eric Clemens, thanking you once again for being with us here in the ESPN family of networks. And it, you know, I always say it every week. It's my favorite part. It's the gimme five. Because he has some of the greatest, most controversial gimme fives. for a long time harvey silk reed number three now i can tell you this as a clue for numbers two and one i have happened to work with you to see both of them up close and personal okay and, and one of them is is with us right now but i yeah. did i give too much away probably give that's me number what you two do. That's give me number two <laughs> <laughs> but for number two alonzo coleman 62 rushing touchdowns in his career four-year starter he was special as a freshman and he split time with Ardell Daniels right. he was there for three of those four years Alonzo Coleman was special they know that great and, speed and the number one Miak all-time great running back you're away. seeing him folks you see him <laughs> you, you gave it away but he's as good as advertised you're Absolutely. seeing it I've seen some great runners but I haven't seen a kid quite as special as he Hicks might have been more physically gifted because he was bigger mm -hmm. but the best runner I've seen in this conference has been Tariq Cohen 
And I, I hate to say, it ain't even close. Tariq yeah. Cohen is special. Now, There's you have a, a bubble why. here, too, as well? And teams on the bubble. There's another Hicks. Okay. Michael Hicks came around, finished in 1995. Michael Hicks can run very well. South Carolina State, Willie Jeffries running back, his last great runner. And for me, that's my five greatest running backs in the MIAC. You disagree with me? Go ahead and hit me up on Twitter at jwalkersky. I don't know how much they could argue with you over that one. They might argue over two and one or something. Maybe some people think Coleman should be number one with those 62 touchdowns. But anyway, we've Here's seen number 28. That's the GOAT right Tariq there. Tariq Cohen. What more does he have for us where he's going to rest up for a bit of the half? We'll be back. Welcome back to Daytona Beach, Florida. Bethune Cookman trailing North Carolina A&T by seven here at the break. And now another one of my favorite segments. It's your 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 top five, your power rankings. And let's see where you go with this one because it's always controversial as well. Yeah, but my word is law, right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. They're all trying to make it to the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. Uh, right now, Tennessee State. They were ranked number three last week, took a loss in OVC play. I said I had my concerns about them going in the conference play. Rod Reed's squad drops a couple notches. All right. Number four. Prairie View a &M. Mm. The Panthers. Uh, they recovered well after that loss to Grambling. They're still in contention in a very competitive SWAC West division. But Prairie View with their head coach, uh, Willie Simmons, they're doing a good job there. They're going to be around for the long haul. Number three is a team that's going to have a say in what goes on in the MEAC book from, from here on out. I believe so. And the folks watching this game are keeping an eye on North Carolina Central in their rear view mirror. I wouldn't call it rear view. I call it side view mirror. <laughs> yeah, better be side. Uh, head coach Jerry Mack has the Central Prime. And keep in mind, the last two seasons, North Carolina Central has beaten North Carolina A&T on the final game of the regular season. So that matchup there, that Aggie Eagle Classic matchup, could be special this year with a lot of on the line. And once again, just like the top five backs, we've seen the top two teams in person. That's we've, all I'm going to say. We've seen them in person. Give me number two. Number two, the G-Men, Grambling State University, putting up a lot of points. But job's not going to be easy. Grambling's very good. Devontae Kincaid, that quarterback, has an opportunity to be SWAC Offensive Player of the Year. Broderick Froff's squad is playing at a very high level. The number one team, they're trying to go wire to wire. You think they're mm. going to do it? They still have some work to do it's here in Daytona. Tough. Right. Exactly. But it'll be tough. But with Tariq Cohen, Rob Broadway's got North Carolina A&T, last year's HBCU National Champions, trying to repeat this year. Impressive. And on the bubble, the team to watch out for, Southern. And the reason why Southern is so unique in this situation, they're ineligible for the Celebration Bowl, but they would love nothing more than to beat Grambling. <laughs> last game of the year in the Bayou Classic, knock them out of the SWAC Championship. And that's all Southern's playing for this year. They've got some talent, though, with Tillery, the running back, Austin Howard, the quarterback. Dawson Odoms has a good squad down there in Baton Rouge. All right, and we'll be back with a very special guest, the commissioner of the MEAC, coming to join us as we continue the halftime festivities here in Daytona Beach. We'll be back. Perfect back. We're back here in Daytona Beach, Florida, where Bethune Cookman is trailing North Carolina A&T. 21 to 14 at the break and joining us in the booth, a very special guest, the MEAC Commissioner Dennis Thomas. Thank Commissioner, Thank thanks you, for sir. being with us, taking time well, out. It's now, always a this pleasure is a, to be among royalty. This is a here, big guy here. You know? <laughs> he's calling us the royalty. You know, he sent servants and stuff to make sure it was all good before right, he joined right, us. Right. But I, I, I really want to commend you and Jay, uh, Eric, for doing a fantastic job, period. But uh, for the MEAC as well, uh, because uh, it's important to us to market, brand our conference. And ESPN has done a magnificent job to uh, to assist us in that well, endeavor. You got that out the way. If, I, if, I, if I've got you here, I want to talk some football with all you. Right. And okay. you have some unique situations taking place in the conference this year. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all eyes are on the Armed uh, Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. Yes. Talk about the importance of that. But more importantly, the importance of possibly two teams going from the Mid-East Athletic Conference into postseason play. Well, first of all, uh, the Air Force Reserve uh, Celebration Bowl obviously is, is tremendous. We had a great experience um, last year, the first time uh, in our celebration bowl, Air Force Reserve. Air Force has uh, done a magnificent job in, in really investing in, in both conferences. So I must commend the Air Force Reserve for, for doing that. Two, I must commend.
then uh, ESPN as well for putting this whole package together. And so that that's a that's a great John Skipper and, and others, Pete Dozik and others have done a magnificent job. Now to get to your question, you keep you keep <laughs> your head and you keep wanting me to answer your question, Jay. Yeah, obviously we we feel good about the number of teams that we have uh, the possibility of going to the FCS playoffs. So that's uh, that will continue to play itself out. Yeah, that's that's the key. as the season go on, and I think that. Um, uh, a and T, um, Central, Central uh, South chance. Carolina State, and even Hampton University to get in there. Yeah. So it, it, yeah. it, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. it's a process that as a, as the season moves on, the picture will become clear. I got gotcha. you. I don't want to cut you short, but I got to get your opinion on this one. We got time yeah. for one more question. Here. I do my give me fives, and you've seen a lot. So this week, my give me five was the top five running backs in the history of the Mid East Athletic Conference. I put Tariq Cohen number one. I put Cohen number one. I, on that list, I had Alonzo Coleman from Hampton. We had Maurice Hicks from A&T. Uh, is Tariq Cohen the, the greatest running back in the history of the Mid-East Athletic Conference? I went on the line saying yes, and I've seen a lot. But well, seen I, I've seen a lot as well, um, and, but I, I don't want to diminish any of the other running backs. Uh, uh, I just saw uh, Cohen with two players had angles at him and uh, those angles went away, Jay. He's special. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I said, wow, this is unusual here. And, yeah. and Bethune has some speed on their team. Sure. Yeah. So I, um, I would say um, uh, Coyne is, if not the best, one of the best. Top two. <laughs> Right. No question. Top two. Absolutely. <laughs> Spoken Absolutely. just like a commissioner. <laughs> Dennis Thomas, thanks so much for being with us. Thank man. you, guys. We appreciate Thank it very much. Thank you very much. We'll well. continue appreciate with the it. halftime festivities here from Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach in just a few moments. Welcome back to Daytona Beach, Florida. The blue and gold marching machine of North Carolina A&T. Just finishing entertaining the crowd here at the break as we get ready to start the third quarter. And both quarterbacks have been pivotal in the play today, Jay. Starting with Larry Brim, who came on after the first series for Cookman. Yeah, and Brim's looked very comfortable. You see the numbers, almost 200 yards passing in the first half with two touchdowns. Really had command the offense and threw some pretty passes throughout the first half. A little bit of a surprise from a team that only averages 117 yards passing a game. Larry Brim played quarterback at a very high level in the first half. And Lamar Raynard trying to match Brim pass for pass in the first half. Wasn't too bad himself. And Raynard's job a little bit different. He has to find the wide open receiver when it's there because his running back Cohen commands so much attention. But it was a good job by the wide receiving core of North Carolina a t creating separation, nice passing lane to allow their young quarterback to find a rhythm in the first half. And that interception late in the first half stopped a potential scoring drive for the Aggies as Cody Jones set to start the second half with his kickoff. And this one will be deep and out of the back of the end zone as he got plenty of leg into that one. And for a touchback and Bethune Cookman will begin the third quarter first and 10 on its own 20. And the story of the Bethune Cookman the offense the passing game found the rhythm. They really had it going well throwing the ball and they abandoned the rush early so two rushing yards that doesn't hurt you because it's hard to rush against a and t but i was really impressed with their offensive production see if they keep it up here in the second half that that surprised you we knew that the secondary for a t was where you could get some yards but the amount of yards and how easy bethune cookman made it look and they, they, they did it a lot with the kind of west coast style attack the short passing game See if they continue the same. There's a quick slant over the middle, and that's off the hand of his intended receiver as he was looking for Frank Brown. And now the game plan has to change for Bethune Cookman in terms of how you were passing and attacking. AT's made the adjustment. They're bringing their cornerbacks up to the line of scrimmage. So, what do you do when you hit press man to man? You have to hit more crossing routes. The offensive line has to protect a little bit longer. But you see at the top of the screen, they're doing bump and run man to man. They're not giving them the quick underneath throws. So now you've got to hold on the ball a little bit longer and allow your receivers time to separate. Aggie showing blitz. They come on the blitz and Brim steps up. And that one is off the hands of his intended receiver as well. Incomplete at the 30. 
as Zarius Lockhart was there on the cover. And you see the confusion. See, that's the crossing route you want to go to, but how far do you let him cross before you throw him the ball? Give him some time to separate. And I just think right now that adjustment by the Aggies is really going to show up here. Now third down and long two of seven on third down so far in the game are the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman trailing by seven here early in the third quarter. Clark just beat that under some heavy pressure is Brim and down he goes snowed under at the 15 yard line several white shirts are there to make the tackle and one of them led by the Mike linebacker Keandre Richardson for a loss of nine a good job by Richardson and Suttles Suttles going to blitz from his safety position come on your left side of your screen misses the tackle but there was Richardson to finish him off and what you can do when you play man-to-man -man coverage, you can disguise your blitz package a little bit better. In that case there, Bethune Cookman not able to identify the blitzing safety. Jonathan Cagle sends a high punt where Chris Garten is hit before he has a chance to catch it. That's an obvious penalty there. And now the question is whether Garten's okay because he certainly did not expect that as he got in position to feel that punt at his 45-yard line. Yeah, that's dangerous. Nothing good comes from hitting an unprotected player. And in that case there, Chris Gardens clearly. Hit catch interference, kicking team, number 54. 15-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, that's a step penalty. He's running backwards, hand goes up. You have to. Back off of him there, and I just don't understand why that penalty was committed. You need more discipline there for Deontay Mayo. It was a little late throwing the hand up right at the last second, but you still got to yeah. allow him to catch it even if he doesn't yep. throw the hand up. You can't blast him before the ball gets there. Tariq Cohen already over 100 yards in the first half, and he begins the second. This time he's held up in the backfield, and he'll be hit for a loss on the play as he loses two. They make it three on the play as Alexander Morales is in the backfield to make the stop. The Morales is a backup strong safety, but they're bringing him in to play linebacker a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage to defend against Tariq Cohen. When you get one-on-one, -on -one, I like the matchup on the bottom. Keys versus Burgess, the big six foot four inch wide receiver. I get him the football. Looking down the seam and has a man inside the 10 down to the six yard line before he is brought down. And that is Chris Garden on the reception. And now he's holding the left hamstring area after a nice catch down the seam of 36 yards. Guard's a guy that can burn. He's their punt returner. We saw him get the flag. The last punt return able to come back in the game. Second time today we've seen him win his battle in the scene, get past the slot defender, makes a nice catch. And the Aggies are driving. Garden with his third catch, 94 yards so far in the game, and a touchdown. And on first and goal. Raynard, quick pass over the middle. He had his tight end, Leroy Hill, open. But I think he had a little bit too much mustard on that one. It's so wide open, he got anxious on the throw. Nice design of the play by Chip Hester. All eyes are going to be on Tariq Cohen. Watch Tariq Cohen bring in the linebackers. Linebackers sell out. He sneaks right behind him. Just throw it over the top. That was a layup. <laughs> That's one as a quarterback you got to wish you had back. And I can see why it happened because things happen quick in the red zone. But in that case, with nobody behind the linebacker, that was the easiest throw he could have had. And the Aggies have brought their fullback, William Hollingsworth, into the game to be an extra blocker. Cohen in motion, takes a quick swing, and it is off the mark as Reynard trying to lead his running back on the swing pass to the left side. But simply overshot it. And if he makes that throw, that's an easy touchdown. And that much space with two blockers out front, Tariq Cohen's going to score on that play. And that's 
what they're trying to do, creative ways to get corn the ball in open space. Here in the open field, look at that. If he makes that catch, I mean, you got a block here, a block here. Tariq Cohen's going to score a touchdown. In the open face like that, almost impossible to tackle him. So it's third and go. Play clock winding down. They got it off in time. Raynard going in zone. And he was looking for Elijah Bell. But Bell very well covered in the end zone. So a good defensive stand once it got deep into the red zone from Bethune Cookman. Well, a couple of missed opportunities as well for a &T. I'd say some poor quarterback play by Lamar Raynard where he missed three consecutive passes once they got the ball in the five yard line. And that's what we're talking about. If he's just consistent, this offense can be explosive, but he can't hurt the offense like he did there when they got the ball in the five yard line. Cody Jones will attempt this one from 22. And it is right through the uprights and good. So North Carolina AT adds to its lead 24 14 now, 12 42 to go in the third. Trust is a big part of this job. We're entering people's lives at one of their most vulnerable stages. Just like our axe or our halligan bar lets us do a professional job. ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's. Back here at Daytona Beach, Florida, Municipal Stadium, where the visiting Aggies of North Carolina a and have added to their lead and increased it to 10, 24, 14 here in the third quarter. And Cody Jones about to kick it off. And Kevon Mitchell stands in his own end zone where he will down it. And the touchback will bring it out first and 10 at the 20 yard line. Rod Broadway has won and brought defense and discipline everywhere he has been. And uh, you can't argue the success. Yeah, I argue, but I think he's trying to fight for being labeled one of the greatest HBCU coaches of all time, winning a national championship in North Carolina Central. Did it again at Grambling. And last year, North Carolina AT won a national championship and looking for another one. He finds a way to get it done. And you talked about good, well coached teams. They've made the halftime adjustments in that short passing game, has not been so wide open. And almost another nice one handed catch out there in the scene as he was looking for Jamie Wilson. But that, that has not been as wide open as we saw those uh, patterns in the first half. Yeah, and they look out of rhythm. They look out of rhythm, and the a &T defense is saying this, they think this is an interception. Did it hit off his foot, or was that the ground? Wow. Well, That's it, off it, his foot. Absolutely. Very difficult to tell from that angle. But Brim has missed his last four pass attempts here to start the uh, second half. Steps up in the pocket, comes near side, and has his man out across the 30 to the 31 yard line as he hits your Will Davis for six. And you see now, you see the double clutch of the football by Brim in the pocket. Because not only do you have to decide where to go with the football, and make sure they're playing man coverage, but now you have to see which receiver's open. When they're going to separate. So the timing of the man to man coverage is really throwing off this Bethune Cookman passing attack. See, so the guy goes across the formation with him, that means he has him in man. Aggies blitzing, they give him enough time to hit his receiver on the near side, Jamie Wilson. And Wilson gets out across the 40 to the 41 yard line or 42 yard line for 11 yards and a first down. And this is a good job by Jim Pye. Man to man coverage, what do you want to see? Watch the linebacker cross the formation here, takes a poor angle, you know it's man to man. He has him one on one, he goes too far back. That's an easy pitch and throw, but it was an assist by sending the guy in motion by the offensive coordinator Pry to let him know that's one on one. That's the easiest throw I can get you, son. And they converted for the first down. Out of the empty backfield, Brim. Looking far side has a man who's tackled immediately and they'll call his forward progress at the uh, 47 yard line for pickup five. Tamadre Abram brought him down. After the catch. Again Bethune Cookman not the first team we've talked to over the last three weeks that thought 
it could come into a game and do a lot of damage through the air against this Aggie defense. And so far, they have done some damage in the so air. Now, and it, now you have to hurt a &T. When they play this look here, nobody deep middle, man to man. Find your best speed guy and go for a, a deep shot down the field. Brim has a man wide open inside the 30. And the fumble is out of bounds. Fortunately for Bethune Cookman, they'll maintain possession. But that was a nice catch and run to Jamie Wilson, who lost it before he went out of bounds. They'll mark it at the 15 yard line. So, red zone opportunity for Bethune Cookman after the catch and run for 38 yards. And, and I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was looking my chops. When you see wide open in the field, no safety, deep man to man coverage, you have to get excited as a quarterback in those situations. And I was glad to see the young man take advantage of it. Grim looking far side has a man over the middle. He's got some room and he'll go in for the touchdown. That is Frank Brown on the catch and run and Bethune Cookman right back in the game after the 15 yard scoring play. And they realize it's a zone coverage. They want to got a one two three high low. Come underneath the Frank Brown. You can see them in this bundle here and find a soft spot here and then an athletic move to the middle. No rush. Settle down, let him clear out, then turn on the Jets. And the extra point is good. So we have ourselves a ball game. Three points separate the Aggies of North Carolina AT from Bethune Cookman's Wildcats with 10 09 to go in the third. Call 1 800 985 6422 or on the web at ESPN College Football presented by McDonald's here in Daytona Beach, Florida, Municipal Stadium. Bethune Cookman, Terry Sims, and his team and fans back in this one after they complete a six play, 75 yard drive, taking two minutes, 33 seconds. And Frank Brown on the 15 yard TD reception. Brim five for five for 75 yards on that drive. The kickoff down to the far side. And that one returned out to just about the 20 yard line. If you thought this was going to be easy for North Carolina AT, I'm sure that the Aggie coaching staff would have told you they knew to expect a hard fought football game down here in Daytona. Now, again, they've tried to keep people off balance, throw it down the field, but now in a situation like this, you might see a little bit more 28 on a consistent basis. Let's see what Coach Broadway and his offense has to offer as the Aggies go on the attack here. First and 10 at their 20. Here is Tariq Cohen. Bounces it across the 20, gets out to about the 24 yard line for four, and he always seems to be moving, even when he's tackled. Yeah, and, you know, and it's tough yards. Right now, it says throw the football the way the defense they're playing, but. The quarterback's losing his accuracy, so they decide to run the football versus the four-man box, but he still gets four yards. That's an effective running back. But, but just look, the through cook and all the white helmets you see. Seven guys around the line of scrimmage. Darren, North Carolina AT to run the football. The Aggies have brought the fullback McMinn into the game. And throwing down the sideline is Raynard and had to throw that one away as well covered was his intended receiver Denzel Keys on the far side. And I'm not so certain that Raynard's not calling a lot of his own plays. Saying, okay, there's a lot of guys close to a lot of scrimmage to stop Cohen from running the ball. I'm going to pull it and try and create something one on one. But he has to realize when you have that many men around a line of scrimmage, it's going to be hard for anybody to run the football. A&T is four of eight on third down so far in the game. This is third and six. Raynard comes near side and a nice strike. Good for first down yardage as he finds Michael Weaver for a gain of eight and they'll move the chains, I think, depending on the spot. Yeah, it's closer to the 34 yard line. So they hesitated for a moment to move the chains, but that is easily first down yardage. A nicely designed play called move the pocket easy throw for your quarterback one person to read he was open and now with first down 
I go back to Tariq Cohen. I think Tariq Cohen has to touch the ball two out of these next three plays. And on the option, Reynard keeps it, gets out across the 40. Before he's brought down at the 41-yard line, he'll be close to first down yardage, I think a little bit short as he picked up nine on that option play and Cohen was there ready to receive the pitch if he wanted to. And that was a good job by Renard. As a quarterback, when you run the option, you're taught if you see five yards, you can pick up five yards of daylight, take it. If not, pitch it. He was able to pick up the first down. Give him a good spot on that keeper on the option play. So 10 yards and a first down for Reynard on that rush. So they move the chains once again. Cohen off the far side and gets it maybe for a yard. Always brought down by a host of gray shirts. Bethune Cookman in the gray shirts with the maroon numbers and white helmets. Stylish, but uh, not so easy to see sometimes. <laughs> In terms of the number identification, but very stylish. Have to give them points for that. Cool. That's, I think they say they've got what, 30 different yeah, uniform yeah, combinations. Yeah, all kinds of combinations. So they let the fans vote on the color combination. Since the TD run, Cohen has seven carries for only 20 yards. Raynard fires and a diving catch by his tight end, Leroy Hill, to keep the drive alive and the chains moving once again. That's a nice effort. 12 yards on that play and a first down. Uh, drifting in the pocket a little bit, though. Sets his feet. A little bit of a drift. That's why the throw gets away from him a little bit, but a good job by Leroy Hill making the catch. Hill coming into the afternoon with 10 catches for 82 yards and a couple touchdowns. For a 6'3", 240-pound target is a nice red zone target. And you get the ball down in there. Seventh play of the drive, and we get a whistle. Here you go. Did they buzz out and look at this? The ruling on the field yep. is a completed catch. The previous play is under review. You are right once again, my friend. On that one, I uh, guess maybe we'll take another look at it. Yeah, when I saw the replay, I said it looks close. But, the, but here's, here's what you say, you wonder. Now, we thought we saw an interception look close. Right. It probably was an interception. If they did not review that one, here they have enough time to review it. Throw gets away from him a little bit. He makes the catch. Not enough to overturn, I think. No, I think um, looks like he holds on to that one. From that angle there. And he got it out away yeah. from his body, but kept control of it as he hit the ground. Yeah, hands are moving a little bit, but ah, oh, that one there. But I don't know Go if that's there, enough that to overturn there. it. That ball was moving, it seemed like. But to overturn it. In other words, it, if they called it incomplete, there wouldn't be enough to overturn it in the other direction either, I don't think. So uh, we'll see. It'll be very interesting. Oh, this is a good look. It should be here. Catch. I mean, he keeps the two hands on the ball. He goes to the ground with two hands on it. On the football, catches it with two, still has the one on it. I wouldn't overturn. I'd say you have to give the catch a little close. Very close. What do you say, Eric? Um, I think it's going to stand. I think it's going to remain a catch. But if it is overturned, it'll be third down and nine. So let's see. The ball did move a little bit, but I thought he kept control over it and kept a hand underneath it as he went to the ground. But I like to see him say, if you're going to make that review, you're going to see it. Take a look at it real quick. You've had enough time to look at it. You obviously don't see enough to say overturn, so let's get back to playing football. But if they start going long, then you start thinking, okay, maybe they want to know where the down and distance was. And this could be a big play. If they overturn this, you're looking at third down and third and nine. And probably a possibility of getting the punt and Bethune Cook and getting the ball back down by three. It'll be third and nine at the ANT 43. Yep, I mean, well, that's a look there you see there, the nose of the football there. 
Looks like it could be, but I, I can't be 100% certain. They are right. After review, the rally on the field is changed to an incomplete pass. It'll be third down and nine yards to go on the 43-yard line. Please set the game clock to seven minutes, 22 seconds. Well, okay, well, like you say, they, they want to get them right, but there were other opportunities that you talked about the ball that might have been off a of foot earlier in an interception. As awkward as that play looked, it was not reviewed. And now they review this one, and they think they get it right with the nose of the football hitting the ground as Leroy Hill went to the ground on the count. Well, as I said, I'm just not, I, I couldn't be 100% certain that he didn't catch that ball. Right. I mean, the ball's allowed to touch the ground. Right. We and saw that on the touchdown in the end zone earlier. And the right hand was underneath the top portion of the football as he went to the ground. So now, big third down to nine because the defense, which is something we're not used to saying, the defense for North Carolina a and is struggling. So I think it's important for a and to pick up a couple first downs and keep the ball in their possession so their defense figures out what to do with this Bill Cookman offense. So a big third down and nine as they reset the game clock, 722, to go here in the third quarter. And Cohen going in motion now to the slide at the top of your screen. Reynard. And he has his man, Denzel Keys. A nice catch as he maintains his balance, stays in bounds, and goes out at the 40 yard line after a pickup of 17. Well, their go to wide receiver, Keys, along with Elijah Bell, got the one on one, the big target. Does a good job of separating, coming back to help his quarterback. Gets the feet in bounds. First down for the Aggies. Have not called Elijah Bell's name too much this afternoon. Here's Tariq Cohen spinning at the line of scrimmage, fighting for some extra yards, and he gets two as he gets it down to the 38. Yeah, they're doing a good job of bottling up Tariq Cohen. But as we've seen before, you can take it half an effort <laughs> trying to make a tackle on him once and he will make you pay. But every now and then I think you force feed. A, a great back like that, you tell the offensive line, just get a block, hold it, and Cohen can make something happen. Off the play fake, quick pass comes to the near side. That's Denzel Keys once again, and he will be stopped right I can't it's tough to tell where they're actually going to spot this one they say went out of bounds back at the 33 yard line so it'll be third down and close to five Tenth play of the drive coming up And the quick slant over the middle, and the pass is completed as the wide receiver, Deshaun McFadden, makes the catch for seven yards, and they'll move the chains again. And once again, Cohen used as a big decoy, going in motion to the far side. Yeah, he brings a lot of attention to him. And all he does is come underneath. Everybody looks to the top of the screen. They go back, backside. Quick slant route by the wide receiver, McFadden. McFadden, a 5'8 sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, with that first down catch. And Reynard going deep, and the back shoulder fade, and Keys had to go off the shoulder pads and was almost intercepted as he kind of knocked that one back in bounds. And almost making the play on it for the interception was Jamal Burgess. Yeah, and this is all on Keys. This is a nice and thrown ball. Back shoulder fade route. Lots of location. He's got to make that catch right away because he drops it the ball pops up and they just miss him but keys has to make that catch right there that was a nicely thrown pass practicing all the time the back shoulder fade 
That case there, the senior from Kinston, North Carolina, not able to make the catch for his quarterback. Second and ten, play clock inside of five. And Raynard goes down hard. And in there in a hurry, almost unblocked, is number 95. A loss of seven that is, on the side. So he just beat his man one on one. Deshaun Ray. Deshaun Ray. Big Ray made him pay. Reynard had little chance of that one. As soon as he started to look downfield, big number 95 was in his face for the sack. Third and 17, 13th play of the drive coming up. Reynard in trouble again, steps out of it. He's going to keep it and get taken down in the open field on a nice tackle just inside the 30-yard line. And now it'll be fourth and very long, and it would be a pretty long field goal for Cody Jones, who, if you're thinking about it, is 0 for 2 this season on field goals of between 40 and 49 yards, which this would be. Jones has plenty of leg. He's a kickoff guy. He's been a great weapon on kickoffs. But making field goals in this range has yet to make it on the season. This will be a 46-yard attempt. Plenty of leg on that one, but he pushed it wide right. So Cody Jones misses the field goal. And the lead is still only three for the Aggies of North Carolina a and Let's take a look at today's Bringing the Flavor, brought to you by McDonald's. Seeing a little bit of everything. I even saw a shot of a drone in there. <laughs> the drone comes from that. But it, it's environment. Right? You yes. Know, they told me to take a beach in the weather, but fans are here. Glad they ain't seen the bands out yep. support their number one ranked football team. The hype man. Never the seen hype the hype man. Man. I've never before. seen a he hype keeps man. He hype during the timeouts. Give credit to the athletic director, Lynn Thompson, for making this a pretty nice game day experience here in Daytona Beach. 3.32 to go in the third quarter is Larry Brim bringing his offense on. Going deep! And incomplete. You know, that was, just got word from a good friend of mine, Luke Williams, that last year in this game, Larry Brim in a relief role for Quentin Williams came in and threw for 187 yards. Dinking and dunking the ball, going short, then going over the top. It seems like Bethune Cookman still hasn't learned the lesson of how to defend Larry Brim. Kevon Mitchell was his intended target on that deep first down throw to Madre Abram, was back on the coverage. And showing blitz. And Brim has to get rid of that one in a hurry as. In his face was Justin Cates, amongst others, and bothered that throw a little bit and caused the incompletion. They're frustrating. You know, uh, Bethune likes to blitz. Look at this. Wow. 12 rushing plays, 34 pass for Bethune Cook. That is opposite of what they normally like to do. But they've been effective, and they're only down by three. And Jim Pry, the offensive coordinator, and head coach Terry Sims said, hey, we're going to take what they give us. Depending on the looks, we're going to do whatever we have to do to move the ball down the field so far. That has been exclusively via the pass. Brim, nice shot to the near side. Short. And has his receiver, but he'll be about a yard or two short of first down yardage as he found Jawill Davis. And teams that are used to throwing the ball regularly, they know the receivers run the route in order to get the distance needed to pick up the first down. 
In that case there, you know what the route is. You know how many yards you need for first down. It's reflex muscle memory that helps you get that extra yard you need. Now they got the completion, but they're yard short. Now they're going to have to punt the football. So now back to punt it will be Jonathan Cagle and in to replace uh, Garden is Deshaun McFadden who will stand in who is standing rather back at about his 30 yard line. We get some movement before the snap and a flag on the play. Delay game offense five yard penalty fourth down. Taking a little bit too long to figure out what they might want to do. You smelling maybe a fake there or something? Is that why they took so long? No, you can't fake when you're back in your own territory that way. I just think it was, I thought they probably assumed they received the first down. Ah. And we're getting ready to call another play and didn't realize the receiver cut his route a yard short. Backup punt returner in there with a left footed punter. This could be interesting. High spiraling punt. And McFadden calls for a fair cut catch and catch that one over his shoulder. Back at about his 21 yard line where A&T will take over. Hey, check out the undefeated.com for reaction from President Barack Obama's trip to North Carolina A&T on Tuesday. A full replay is available on Watch ESPN. And again, you were there along with many of others and it must be an awesome experience. I know you live in the D.C. area and you've probably seen big time politicians before, but to be that up and close with the president must have been nice. Oh, anytime. Intimate room and a great job by the undefeated. Definitely worth checking out. You go there, you also see my Give Me Fives are on the undefeated. Mm -hmm. They also put the power rankings there on a weekly basis. So definitely go to theundefeated.com. Coach Rod Broadway was on hand as well, said it was a thrilling experience, and Tariq Cohen met immediately in the backfield on that handoff. And right in there was the big run stuffer, Demarcus Womack, and a loss of four on that. And kept listen, you see him number 50 right in the middle of your screen, nowhere to go. And he's just winning this battle one on one. And that's one of those things I said, just imagine if this line play for ATK, it's got a little bit better. Not so many tackles for loss in the backfield. Cohen's numbers would be even more eye popping. Cohen cuts it back, gets some room, and he gets out across the 30 yard line. And you got to get ready. <laughs> because he had one guy to beat. If he beats the tackler there, he's off and running for a long run once again. Yeah, you can see him with the big pulling guard, Brandon Parker, the tackle, gets in the way. He doesn't have time to wait for him. He accelerates it. Show you, runs with some pop. Finished off that run there. Tried to run through the defender for that extra yard for the first down, but just missed by a yard. Big number 70 Parker showing his athleticism there. His coaches think he has pro potential, but he needs to put on weight at 299 and Cohen fumbled it. And uh, depending on the spot there, I don't know if he made that first down. The fumble might have actually helped him if, if they ruled him. I agree. Now, this is what you have to review, because if it's a fumble, the offense can recover fumble down the field. Right. And where he picked up the fumble, I thought was a first down different from where the spot of the ball was. Uh, the only thing I could figure is that they ruled him down by contact before the fumble, which uh, left him with literally no gain. And it'll force A&T to punt. So Cohen is spinning. That ball started to move before he went down. And maybe that extra half yard would have gotten it. Steven Sawicki on the punt, and now we get whistles. Play and game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Delay of game as we were within uh, the final 32 seconds of the third quarter here. And I'm very surprised that you allow this to happen. This is a three point game. You know, those extra five yards can mean everything in terms of a field goal try. And both teams have been haphazard with their punt team getting on the field. And those five yards will come back and bite you. Jamie Wilson back deep to receive an end over end punt. Comes down to Wilson at his 33 yard line where he fair catches right there. And Bethune Tickman, uh, Cookman rather, takes over after the 40 yard punt. So, once again, you have to give credit for the Wildcats in this position. Down by three. And Grimm has done a good job throwing the ball. 
I think because of the adjustment, here's what you do. You know, it's a chess match now. They're playing man-to-man -man cover stone off the timing. I think what you do is you tell Larry Brim, well, you become our running game. Because in man-to-man -man coverage, nobody accounts for the quarterback. You don't expect him to run the football. Cameron Rigby trying to get the edge on the far side, and he has tackled for no gain there. There's a bunch of white shirts where they're led by the linebacker, Deion Jones, to Andre Abram, also coming up from his cornerback spot to make the tackle. And that'll be the last play, most likely, here in the third quarter. There it is. That is the end of the third quarter. And, folks, we have ourselves a ball game. Final 15 minutes, North Carolina a and and Bethune-Cookman separated by just a field goal. Jets, Cardinals. Just about to start the fourth quarter here at Municipal Stadium in Daytona Beach, Florida. North Carolina a and up over Bethune-Cookman, 24 to 21. And the Wildcats continuing their march in the fourth quarter, second and 10. Rim going deep down the far side, has a man breaking behind the defense, and he will score! Frank Brown! Let him get comfortable in the pocket. I mean, he's back there playing seven on seven. The pass rush has just not been there for North Carolina a &T. Look at him get nice and comfortable in the pocket, set his feet. He's thrown some pretty balls all day, hit the receivers in stride. And Bethune Cookman grabs the lead here late in the fourth quarter with a quick strike offensive attack. Brown's third touchdown of the afternoon. He's over 100 yards receiving at 117. That plays 67 yards, and he couldn't have handed it to him any better. The touchdown is good after the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Offense, number 15. That 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Both teams are really valuing field position in this game. <laughs> They're going back and forth. This is a good old fashioned react contest that we thought would have more implications for both teams. Instead, the Cook Cookman showing that the pride of the champion going toe to toe with the Aggies. Frank Brown, their leading receiver in terms of yards and number of receptions coming into the game with 12 for 202 yards and two TDs. And after the extra point gives them a four point lead, he's added mightily to those numbers now with five touchdowns in the season. And uh, of course, 117 yards receiving the data after that 202 yards. Uh, there they go. What do you think, Eric? We've been around. Uh, Coordination, uh, they play so very well. They, you can recognize everything they're playing. Really an outstanding band here. But what I like is you don't have to have them on the field at halftime to appreciate them. Right. They're active from the seats and stands, get the crowd into it. And it's a tough thing when this football team is winning and that band's playing loud. Tough place to win a football game. North Carolina a t is seeing that firsthand right now. And Larry Brim, who sat out the first series and has really come on ever since 20 of 34 for 324 yards and four touchdown passes so far in the game. And remember, a t has outscored opponents 56 to 6 in the fourth quarter so far this season. So we'll see what they have left over. The kick is short. It comes down at the 25-yard line. And this is McFadden, and McFadden gets out to close to midfield. After that penalty, they'll have great field position. Frank Brown, big day so far today, three TDs. They're coming into the game. We had two touchdowns on the season. We have a little bit of a coming out party. The junior from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, has been able to beat his man time and time again, showing you the speed of the Jets. And I think the speed of Frank Brown has been unexpected. He's giving the Aggies trouble. This last one gave the Wildcats the lead here in the fourth quarter. Frank Brown, phenomenal day thus far. 14-43 to go in the game. And Bethune-Cookman, which has led 
in every one of its contests so far. Here's Shuri Cohen. Cohen breaks in the secondary and lost his balance just a little bit, or he might have gone all the way on that one. He goes down. He'll be marked down at the 31-yard line after a pickup of 21. Yeah, they went with eye formation, more of a traditional set. And Cohen may see in the NFL next year, showing you had the quick step to burst to daylight. You mentioned almost stayed on his feet for a touchdown run. So when teams get out formation with a fullback, follow the fullback. He's going to show you where the ball's going. Cohen in motion. They fake the swing pass to him. Going down in the seam, and a receiver is open for the nice catch down to about the 10-yard line. And it looks like he hits Elijah Bell, the big true freshman out of Wheeling Park, West Virginia, the former basketball star there, 21 yards. And now the Aggies coming right back. And this is good because he knows he's going to get hit, but he makes the catch anyway with his back to the defense, holds on to the football. Big catch by Bell. Cohen, plenty nice. of room. Touchdown. Nobody even touched number 28. Eleven yards on that scoring play, and just like that, the Aggies of North Carolina and T are back on top. Well, this is a good job by Tariq Cohen finding the crease for the daylight. And runs into the end zone untouched. I actually think I might have had a chance for <laughs> no. running through that hole. No, you don't think so? I got a little speed left. Don't let your eyes see him. He just makes it look easy. I was just kidding. 31-28. <laughs> North Carolina A&T back up by three. We'll be back. If you well, there he is. His team down by three. They enjoyed a brief lead before a t came back and struck fast with the help of Tariq Cohen, the hype man. That's the hype man. He's I've, I've get never seen up. that at a college football game. A guy on the sideline with a wireless microphone whose job it is to hype up the crowd and the team as a high short kickoff will come down at the 21. And bursting into a nice hole across the 40 will set up Bethune Cookman in great field position. And you get down in the game in the fourth quarter, you got a superstar running back. What do you do? Sometimes just make it happen. Give the ball to Tariq Cohen from the I formation. Go out there and create the Cohen. You see the first run. You can tell he started getting the engine going. Then with the pull and fullback, Tariq Cohen explodes in a hurry as the Aggies reclaim the lead. And we had a personal foul penalty after the touchdown that set up the short kickoff here in great field position for Bethune Cookman. And they've got to be pretty happy about this, especially the way they've been moving the ball through the air. Nothing on the ground, really. All of their damage done through the air, and especially with Frank Brown, who has three touchdown receptions in this one. And Brim, good protection. Now he's running out of time. Throws it, but has a man. And going down on the reception is Jaquan Loomis, his tight end. And Brim took a nice shot to the lower body, but he picked up 20 on that completion. Will Ralph by the tight end set that through. Put the ball in the absolute perfect location between the safety and the cornerback. Larry Brim's comfortable back there in the pocket. He's on his way to a 400-yard passing afternoon. Brim looking near side again. That one deflected at the line of scrimmage and almost intercepted. Looked like Angelo Keys got a big hand up and deflected that one. And I'm seeing some changes in the secondary for North Carolina A&T at safety. They've got Tyree Andrews, number 18, replacing Lorenz Suttles. Suttles was beat for two touchdowns in the first half. Looks like they're going with more of a cover type safety in 18 to help against the pass. Sean Blitz, they are blitzing, and here they come. And look at Brim get rid of that ball and find his receiver down the seam for first down yardage as he hit Tupac Ismi out of the backfield. And that's knowing the coverage. He put this ball with plenty of air because he knew he could go deep down the middle. 
Ismi does a great job of holding on. And see Brim knows he's going to get hit, put some air on it, let him run underneath it, and by time, Tyree Andrews, who came in for the coverage, gets there too late. Great job schematically of picking apart this defense by Bethune Cookman. He has thrown a couple of perfect passes on this drive under heavy duress, getting hit as he released the ball, and there's another one batted down at the line of scrimmage. Incomplete, and there's our man again, Angelo Keys. And what I really like is because he knows the coverage he's seeing, he's, he's recognizing what he's seeing, he's passing the ball. A lot of kids go out there and they just want to throw, wait till somebody comes open and throw. He's reading the coverages. That allows him to have different trajectory on the passes to throw the most dangerous pass. Really impressive job by Larry Brim of picking apart this North Carolina A&T defense. 5'11", 209-pound junior out of Delray Beach, Florida. Looking very confident now as Bethune-Cookman trying at least for a tying field goal. There's another touch pass, but it was this one well overthrown in the end zone, and they're going to call pass interference on that one to the delight of Terry Sims. Deion Jones was back in coverage. They say he held the receiver up a little bit too much. And I think the fact that it's a holding call will stand whether or not it was catchable or not, and I think it's the right thing. It was clearly holding on the play. So it doesn't matter if the ball was catchable or not. Pass interference, defense, number 34. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball we placed at the two-yard line, automatic first down. I mean, he's nowhere close to that ball, but they called the interference for a time. That's going to be first down for Bethune Cookman. This will not be easy two yards for them to get there. No. They have not shown the ability to run the football versus the Aggie defense. The Aggies ranked all season long, preseason favorite in the MEAC, fighting for their lives here as it, on the sweet play. It is a touchdown, and Bethune Cookman takes the lead back once again. Tupac Ismi on the short touchdown run. Good patience, wants to bounce it outside, sees another Aggie waiting to make the tackle, cuts back hard inside. And the young freshman from Naples is a key contributor on the last scoring drive. And the extra point is good, so the Wildcats lead it by a score, and they need a touchdown, does North Carolina a &T, to take the lead back and as far as Terry Sims and Bethune Cookman, they've been dogged by weather. Of course, we were here for week one against Alcorn Swack Neak Challenge. That was canceled after a nearly three hour delay. Almost a three hour delay in week five against Central. Uh, South Carolina State, because of the hurricane, postponed and moved to the end of the season. And they do not have a win on this season, and they've suffered several injuries to a young squad, still waiting for people to develop. And this would be a huge victory if they can hold on to this four-point lead here in the fourth quarter. And I think the loss to Savannah State might have been the wake-up call for them. But it might have been living off of past years, success. But this is the type of Wildcat football team that I'm sure Coach Sims thought he would see most of the year. And let's not forget, they've had 13 starters miss time to injury, not able to play it. You've got even a game like today where their best defensive player, Richardson, he's out of the game. But they've also lost the starting quarterback today, so this team has been resilient, <laughs> to say the least. And here's Williams, a nice lane off the left side there, got it almost out to the 30-yard line on the return of the kickoff. And now we'll see what the Aggies have up their sleeves. And, of course, we know they have number 28, who you'll probably see a lot more of from here on in for the final 12 minutes of this contest. Coach Broadway, uh, we talked to him earlier in the week, and he did say that he wanted to establish some deeper passes down the field to get people to have a little bit more respect for the running game. We'll see how much this Bethune team respects the running game and how many guys they have in the box when 
Tariq Cohen, number 28, is back there in the backfield. And the fullback is back in the game to help with blocking. And this is Cohen. Cohen into the secondary. And Cohen gets out to the 45-yard line before he's brought down. I mean, he expects to hit a home run every time he touches the football. He sees a crease and he accelerates through it. I mean, you see this traditional set, makes one cut, runs through the would-be tacklers, and almost he takes on that blocker, that tackle, like he expects to run through it. That's William Hollingsworth, the big fullback who came into the game. Cohen picked up 17 on that last play, and here he is again off the left side. And Cohen gets more about, like about three on that play, maybe four. As he goes off left guard. But I really do like to look when they put him in the eye formation with the fullback. Hard to find, but he has great vision, can find the hole. A new added wrinkle that they've added to Tariq Cohen's repertoire for Fulton Greensboro. What was the name you gave the blocking fullback? It's like 5'9", 241, like Hollingsworth. Do they have a nickname just a blocking fullback like that? I mean, he, he looks like a fire plug out there. Extra guard. <laughs> Cohen. Trying to bounce it outside, and he is caught and held on to for dear life. He might have lost a yard on that one on the far side. As Trevor Merritt, a true freshman, number 35, was over there and held on to the jersey and spun him down. So this is a big third down play. You know, most of the, the, the last couple of weeks we've had North Carolina a and and they've usually been ahead, but they are down. By four with ten and a half to go yeah, in the fourth quarter. In this tested medal of your team right now. You have a championship team where you're in a tough conference game on the road versus a desperate football team. Lamar Reynard goes to the back shoulder fade once again. They want a flag thrown over there and they get one very late. And actually we have two. We might have a rough in the passer. Back where Reynard released the ball, Jamal Burgess was over there on the coverage of Denzel Keys. Yep, so I think that both penalties will probably go against Bethune Cookman. There's a late hit on the quarterback. It might be defensive pass interference or holding. Fouls in the play, both against the defense. Pass interference, defense number 11. That penalty's declined. Personal foul, rough on the passer. Defense number 95. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Deshaun Ray has been in the face of Lamar Reynard much of the second half, but too much of him on this play after the pass. This went high. You know, his two arms went high for the head above the shoulders. And they call that. And they, they call that consistently. And that's going to be a costly set of penalties for Bethune-Cookman. AT gets to keep possession of the football. And Cohen stacked up. Might have picked up a yard on that play as a lot of gray shirts were there to greet him just as he got to the line of the scrimmage and the point of attack. Anthony Myers, one of them, there on the tackle. And ho hum, Tariq Cohen not 22 rushes, 206, so we've seen a 256 a 200 and now 206 and counting in the last three weeks that we've had him on our air here at ESPN and ESPNU. Reynard going deep, has a man, touchdown, Elijah Bell. Did the young freshman make a readjustment for the football in midair or what? Well, he's a former basketball star in high school, and he used every bit of that basketball post-up ability to make that catch 37 yards. Watch him adjust his body, come back for the football, and the safety, Arthur Williams, loses sight of it. That's a good job by Bell completing the play for the touchdown. The extra point is right through the uprights, and back and forth we go. Back to a one-possession game with the Aggies of North Carolina a and in front. 38-35, Elijah Bell. Nice move on the TD game. Go to FlexioLiquid.com. 
Back at Municipal Stadium where the Aggies of North Carolina A&T have taken a three-point lead over Bethune-Cookman. Uh, you missed the kickoff while we were way at break. We had a nice return, but it was called back due to an illegal block in the back. So Bethune-Cookman backed up a little bit at its own 12-yard line where Larry Brim will see if he can march his squad right back down the field again as he has done much of the second half here against the stingy Aggie defense. Near side, that one picked off. Nothing but green and a touchdown. Jeremy Taylor, the linebacker, drops back into coverage and takes an easy one back for pick six. 24 yards on that return. Good job dropping under coverage, and it was created because Brim could not see over his tackle where he was throwing the football, threw this ball kind of blind. And look, he's trying to look over, can't really see him lose his sight. There's a collision in the secondary, and Jeremy Taylor comes away with the pick six that the Aggies I think they desperately need. Yeah, it can't get much easier than that. Nothing but green in front of number 48 when he caught that one. Taylor, one of the leaders on this team, the playmaker always around the ball, and returns that one easily after he corralled it for 24 yards on the pick six. Let's see, look at Brim. You're going to see him lose sight right, right there. He hesitates to lose sight. His tackle is in his face, his line of vision. Not able to make the tackle, and that's going to be a play, a throw. He definitely wishes he could have back. And he wasn't on the same page as receiver with his receiver either. He cut inside, and he threw it as if the receiver would stay stationary at that point. And all the defender, Jeremy Taylor, had to do was stand there and make sure he caught it and run the other way. Now, do you think I could have scored on that one? No. No. You don't, fast, respect, you don't respect my speed, man. I, I could have scored down there, man. Them guys are fast, and I can. I am only kidding. I don't want to run a play or even simulate a play, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is, it was, it, it was nothing but green in front of him. And and you you right. All he had to do was make the catch. Make the, the catch. catch. And he bobbled it. He bobbled it. He tried to give it away. So now we have a two score game with the Aggies in front. So this will be a key possession with 9.03 to go here in the fourth quarter for Bethune-Cookman as they'll get it on the uh, kickoff. And now I want, I want to see the medal of Larry Brim. What's he made of? To be a great quarterback, you have to put it behind you. Through the interception, so what? I've got nine minutes to come up with at least 10 points. Uh, we've seen a lot in this game, but ball kind of fell off the tee there. So no play. Come do it over again. Do we have some kind of breeze down on the field? Did it slip? Very muggy. We went off on the uh, we went out on the field uh, about an hour or so before game time, and as soon as you hit the field out here, we were sweating. So now they're going to have a holder there for Cody Jones. And this one comes down at the 15. We have a flag on the play as Kevon Mitchell is the one couple of flags down on the field in the area of some illegal blocks thrown down there on the special teams of Bethune-Cookman. So they'll be backed up once again. And you can see the official shirts blowing. So there is quite a breeze that is blowing down there on the field here at Municipal Stadium. During the return, holding, return team, number 14, 10-yard penalty, first down. So they have to talk about that. There were two holding calls on the penalty on the play, and obviously, if you're a and you want to take the one that occurred the furthest back towards the beginning of the play, so it'll give them a worse field position than where the second hole occurred. And that was Broadway up by 10, but he knows he can't breathe easy. But Thune Cook has done a good job in a 10-point lead with almost nine minutes to go. There's plenty of time for the Wildcats to get right back in this thing. Brim right now, 22 out of 39 for 370 and four touchdowns with that Big interception.
And now a rare running play that produces positive yards for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman. And I think AT at this point, they'll be willing to sacrifice some of the rushing defense right now to stop the pass. Because when you run the ball, the clock's going to continue to tick. And they wouldn't mind slowing down the pace and tempo of this game. Jamaris Tompkins with that 10 yard run to pick up first down yardage. Try to keep the defense of North Carolina ANT honest. Grim looking near side has his receiver and he'll get it out before he's held on to for dear life at the 35 yard line. Traveris Copeland on the reception that time and Tamadre Abram bringing him down on the tackle. Those are tackles that they'll give those away all day. Make them throw short. If you can hold them five yards of completion, they'll take that, make the tackle in the field of play. They're just trying to really stop the big plays right now from the two cook. Graham looks near side, had a receiver wide open. As it was Frank Brown, and Frank Brown, I think, was looking where he'd run after he made that catch. Yeah, that was a blown coverage. And this talk in the secondary right now between number 18, Tyree Andrews, and Marquise Willis, number 32, the safety in the corner, because you're not supposed to have somebody that wide open. I mean, there the wasn't anybody the within about 15 yards of him. If he turns with that ball, he's going to run for a good 20, 30 yards before anybody has a chance. That's what I mentioned. Right Andrews, about. the backup coming into the game, right. you lose some of your communication skills, and they're not on the same page. Big third down play here. Brim under some pressure, and down he goes. Well, he was kind of held up there for other guys to hit him. No whistle was blown. And finally taken down for another sack and a loss of eight by the Aggie defense. So for the first time in the fourth quarter, one of these offenses is stopped <laughs> without a score. Talk about a shootout. They, they played some defense here. In the... <laughs> well, we he did have an interception return for a that, touchdown. That's true. Forgot about that. Cagle strikes this one from his 17. And there's Tariq Cohen on the punt return. And look at Tariq Cohen. Go up the middle. <laughs> Cohen, there's a flag down on the play. But Cohen's going to score. It, I've had NFL scouts say, can he return punts? I, I said, of course he can, but it just happened that Chris Garden is an All-American punt returner. Now, although this comes back, I don't know if it's coming back or not. And uh, the, based on the reaction of one of the Aggies back there holding the helmet. Return the kick, holding, return team, number two, 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick, first down. What can't this young man do on the football field, though? Michael Weaver Jr. on the holding, and what a wild fourth quarter we had. I mean, you see there, uh, Larry Graham throwing dimes on the money most of the game. Tariq Cohen doing what Tariq Cohen does well, run the football, scoring touchdowns. Bethune able to answer with a nice touchdown drive. And the key play, Elijah Bell gave the Aggies a little bit of wiggle room in this play right here. Allow North Carolina a to extend their lead to 10, and that's where we are right now. How quick was that kick return by Tariq Cohen? <laughs> I mean, he was in the end zone. I mean, if you glance away for a second, he's, he's doing something else, and there's the game summary. Cohen over 200 yards rushing. Raynard, not a bad afternoon, and neither has it been a bad afternoon for Larry Brim approaching 400 yards. And this is a backup running back to Cohen, Amos Williams, who's gotten 90 yards so far rushing this year on 39 carries. And Williams, uh, after that 67-yard punt return that didn't count, will help give his teammate a breather. Picks up a yard or so on the play. Now Reynard runs off the field, and it looks like they've got the backup, Femi Bamiro, 
in the game at quarterback right now for the Aggies. And Bamiro going to keep it. Bamiro into the secondary. And Bamiro still dragging tacklers out across the 35, up close to the 40 yard line. That's what he does well. He's a big fella. 6'4, 211, fifth year senior out of DC. And he picked up 16 yards that time. So we saw him last week versus. Norfolk State come in and played the whole second half. Didn't complete many balls, but was effective running the football. So maybe they said we can put a little wildcat type package in there with him at the quarterback position. Came on for a play to run it and run it he did. 16 yards in the first down. Yeah, you see Raynard deliberately taking his time at the line of scrimmage. They're going to try and deflate this football and do a heavy dose of running. Up two scores, the clock would seemingly be your friend. This is Tariq Cohen trying to pick a hole to run through. He decides to go left and he gets it outside the 40 yard line for a pickup of two. I really think they had success when they would run Tariq Cohen off tackle. Well, he can run in between the tackles. We know that, but you put him on an angle where he's running downhill. His ability to cut and change direction really makes him special. And the Lua Femi Bamiro back in at quarterback. Cohen, by the way, 23 carries, 208 yards. It's his seventh career 200 yard rushing game. That's an AT school record. So here's Bamiro, and he's going to keep it once again off the left side. Bamiro, another first down. Bamiro into the secondary and inside the 30 down to the 26 yard line. Talk about change of pace. And these are designed quarterback draws. You see a good job on the left side of the screen. The tight end gets a seal block. They bring the entourage around with the center, Daria Max 72. And then the great foot speed on display by Bermiro. This party just giving trouble to Bethune Cookman. I'm sorry, Jay, 33 yards on that run by Bermiro. And now. The backup quarterback is under center. Tariq Cohen bounces outside and is finally met. Look at him drive the pile forward. Still fighting for yardage. And this is a 5-6 football player. Now some extracurricular stuff going on over there. And we have a flag down. Yes, we do have a flag down on the play. Unless we see some deliberate, I, I hate to see a penalty like this. Right. And that's effort. Cohen is not going to go down easily. They're trying to slow him down. He keeps the legs turning like you're taught. The whistle's there. I, I'm just curious about this call right here. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 32. Half a distance to the goal. To call the face Automatic mask. first down. Yeah, that's fine. No problem with that. You have to call the face mask. You know, one thing Cole's going to do, I mean, nothing here, but he's going to try and create something, makes the cutback, and he's just keeping the legs going. Then he went up high around the face mask. That's, but he got caught. Yeah. He, he got caught. Wasn't a deliberate trying to hurt him type face mask. Vion Robinson, and this becomes a key possession here. They got to at least hold him to a field goal to keep it a two possession game. And milk the clock. What you have to do is you don't want to keep your offensive line down there too long when you're trying to hold it, so you have to get set with five seconds and then snap it. Ramiro, the quarterback keeper, and this time he's brought down after a short pickup up the middle of three. And now still some more extra stuff going on as we get down inside the three minute mark in the game. And time certainly favoring. The Aggies who lead by 10. And with your backup quarterback in there, you, you need to tell them ball secure. Hold on to the football. We can take losing yards where we are right now. What you can't have is a fumble. Bethune come out of there running away with it. Play clock down inside of five. And it's reading zero, but. I guess they must have a different setup on the field because no flag has been thrown. Stadium clock says seven seconds. Okay. Ramiro 
Handing to Cohen, who bounces outside and gets that ball in the end zone. That may come back. That might come back because of a flag on the play. But this kid's amazing. There was nothing there. Again. <laughs> Should have been tackled for a loss in the backfield. He turns it into a touchdown run from 10 yards, and I think they're going to call holding on the wide receiver in the end zone. There is no foul on the play for the holding. Touchdown. All right, second time we've seen a call, no call, like that. One earlier for an illegal block. Look at Cohen on this one, bounce it outside. I mean, just look how disorganized this play is. There's penetration all over the place. Two tacklers. Makes one guy miss, finds daylight to the outside, and gets into the end zone. But, I mean, I've said it again, and you saw my give me five at halftime. Tariq Cohen's the best running back I've seen in this conference. And I think he's the best running back in the country. Should be a Peyton Award finalist. Nobody does it better. Tariq Cohen adds on to his stats. The Aggies are complete. Back here in Daytona Beach, Tariq Cohen with 208 yards on 23 carries this afternoon. Seventh career 200-yard rushing game for him. And what a career stat line. 4,921 yards and counting the all-time MIAC career rushing leader. That uh, completed a seven-place 78-yard drive by the Now let's start talking about this. In order, is a MIAC lead rusher. Charles Anthony, Tennessee State, great rusher. He had over 5,000 yards. There have only been three running backs in HBC football history with over 5,000 yards. Richard Huntley had 6,200. I don't know if it's real. He's not going to catch that. But you've got Antonio Leroy, who had 5,000 yards. And Charles Anthony had 5,000. So the difference is Richard Huntley did a division two. Went to Salem State. Tariq Cohen's going to be the all time leading Division one HBC running back. A little squib kick is returned out to about the 35-yard line where Bethune-Cookman takes over. And in another two minutes and five seconds, Coach Broadway trying to figure out a way to stop this team and get out of here for the 11-hour bus ride back home to Greensboro, North Carolina with another victory. And move to 3-0 and in the conference. And Bethune-Cookman, though, making a great effort this afternoon. Looks like they're going to fall to 0-3 and 0-5 on the year. Bethune's the best, the best winless team in the country. I'd say that in this conference. And a and I'm starting to say, they're getting exposed. I mean, we knew that secondary had some issues. And... Bethune Cook coming in here, not a vaunted passing attack, a team that averages 115 yards, 117 yards passing the game. Are they over 400 yards passing? Is, 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 he, is he close to it? I mean, that's remarkable. And Brim coming to the sideline this time. His afternoon is over. For the team, uh, 378, Brim, 376 of those. And Akevius Williams, who started and played the first series, before coming out is back in at quarterback. Williams stepping up in the pocket, fires over the middle and has his man at midfield inside to the 49 yard line where they're running the hurry up. And I think it all goes back to Hampton. When we saw that Hampton game. Cornell Maynard, head coach at Hampton, one of the best offensive minds out there said, I'm abandoning the running game. We can throw for yards on them. And although it was a losing effort, they threw for 350 yards that game. Didn't have the points to go along with it. Well, Bethune took that footprint and added some points to the total to make this a really good football game. And Williams escapes some trouble that time and brings it to the near side and gets first down yardage, I believe, inside the 40 to the 38-yard line where he goes out of bounds with a minute 21 to go. First three quarters, the Aggies scored 24, and in the fourth quarter of this game, they've scored 28. And give credit, on the road, you're going to have some tough ones. And, you know, we knew Bethune would have a fight, and they were able to put the team away in the fourth quarter. But I'm just telling you, North Carolina Central, one thing that Jerry Mack can do, that head coach for Central, Jerry Mack, he's an offensive mind, a lot like Condell Maynard. He believes in throwing the football. 
And Akevius Williams going for the home run ball there in the end zone. And it's out of the back incomplete. And I, I like what Broadway says. He just focuses a game at a time in terms of you know who they're going to play. But it's so hard to think that they can't think about the Aggies. So they've got Bethune, and next week they're going to witness the world's best homecoming <laughs> when they go to Howard. Why would Howard schedule them for home? I have no idea. I, 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 I've told everybody. I don't know what the alma mater was thinking, but somebody wasn't thinking. Williams just looking for anything downfield. That went incomplete as he was intending to hit John Tavius Carter that time on the near side. And Coach Broadway, this is what he has. That's not easy. And the Aggies the rest of the way, not easy at all. And FAMU much improved under Alex Wood in the second year. Uh, A&T and State always go at it. Mm -hmm. Always. Buddy Pugh and Broadway always. Delaware State's trying to get a little better. And then at the end, Central. Central. A big rivalry game. And that game could be for MIAC championship honors. And that one picked off. And a lot of green in front of the defensive back, but he is brought down. As that one was intercepted by Zarius Lockhart, it looks like. Number nine, the safety coming through, and he's run down before he's able to turn that one into a pick six. 55 seconds to go. The Aggies of North Carolina T and North Carolina AT have this one sewn up. Why are you checking your credit score? I want to see if it changed. Credit scores don't change that much, do they? Really? I'll take it. Sir, your credit is great, right? When was the last time you checked? Uh... Yeah, I better check my credit score. Here, try Credit Karma. It's free. All right. No more surprises. Credit Karma. Give yourself some credit. Here for the smarter choice. My razors will get you a high quality shave at a very economical price. Cool. Nope, can't have this one. It's display. Get your first month of razors free at dollarshaveclub.com. What? You thought you'd be the only tigers out here? Let me tell you something. There are many roads to the playoff, one for each team. They're all headed to the same place, but only four get in. So buckle up, the journey starts now. ESPNU College Football is presented by McDonald's. I'm loving it. Ah, Daytona International Motor Speedway, where if you approach these turns at anything less than 75 miles an hour, your car just slide down into the infield, and you'd have bad tires and people mad at you and everything. T TV doesn't do it justice. How no. steep those inclines yeah. are on the corners. I mean, I've, I've walked up that before, and it's a hike. Okay. Your calves are burning. You lose your balance. What, what does it hold? We were looking this up a few weeks ago. It, it holds like 100 and 120 some thousand people. Yeah. They're going to take victory formation. Will the Aggies just take a knee here for the final 55 seconds? What a wild second half we've had. With A&T putting up 28 points in the fourth quarter alone to kind of blow open what was a close game, believe it or not. It was a 35-31 Bethune-Cookman lead. It just seemed like moments ago. And a quick interception return for a touchdown after and Cohen and company get the uh, go-ahead score. And, and the story, the storylines kind of played out. The storylines I've seen in React football this season have been how good is A&T? Can they go wire to wire? they got a great chance. Tariq Cohen is fantastic. And the disappointing storyline is Bethune-Cookman winless. Talk about a, a team that's shared, was it four of the last seven NBAC titles? The last uh, four last in a four. row. They've had a share of it or won it outright. 
and they are yet to win a football game in 2016. And this team has high expectations of competing for crowns. It's not going to happen in 2016. Coach Rod Broadway greeting Terry Sims on the field as both teams exchange handshakes. And North Carolina a &T. Guy had its hands full, especially trying to defend the pass in this one. Frank Brown with a big game for Bethune Cookman. But in the end, the Aggies ranked all year long in FCS football. And the number one team in black college football, the defending black college national champions, come away with a 52 to 35 victory. They move to 3 and 0 in the conference. And Bethune Cookman, as we talked about, falls to 0 and 3. For Jay Walker and all of us here at ESPN, I'm Eric Clemens saying so long from Daytona Beach, Florida. Aid well. Our producer is born. So from the jump, Pete Carroll went to work. Coach, hey. Pete was very specific. He was very clear. Here are our goals, gentlemen. Beat UCLA beat Notre Dame, win the Rose Bowl, win a national championship. Okay, so everybody should be rolling too, huh? Somebody had given him Coach Wooden's book, the one that has a compilation of all of his observations and reflections about life. And as he read it, he realized, I don't have a set of real values. What would be the core of my program? I think he did a lot of self-evaluation and he studied. What I've tried to do is be a hands-on guy. You can be a head coach and not be a hands-on guy. That's how it was in the NFL. I didn't do it right for me. The right way for me to do it is give them the most I can give to them. And I had a real strong mindset about the philosophy and the approach and the language and all of those things that I wanted to put into play. First meeting of the year, Pete comes in, he has a football in his hand, and the first words out of his mouth are, it's all about the ball. So we made a tremendous emphasis on protecting the football. A lot of times they do a real nice job. But every now and then, there's that guy that makes that mistake. It was a whole different regime when he showed up. These are young men looking for guidance. Coach Carroll 